Welcome everyone to the Archon Team League Championships. Uh, we're on to Phase 2. This is going to be the last match of Phase 2, which should be kind of exciting. With me today is Dog. I don't think we've ever casted together. How are you doing, man? <laughs> I think we have. I'm, good. I'm pretty good. You know, woke up, a little refreshed, had some coffee, ready to watch some good Hearthstone. Yeah, got to get some coffee, right? Started the day off. Um, so, did you watch the, the games that happened yesterday, or were you not uh, following those like super uh, closely? I watched. I watched some of them. They're pretty right. good. A couple of wonky decks. We had the you know Paladin with secrets and uh, Eloise's weird warlock with shield bear or something. That was shield bear and fist of Jaraxxus. <laughs> yeah, the whole the whole discard shenanigan. Like no tiny knights of evil and succubus, but it was uh, pretty unusual. Although they did move on, so it's going to be kind of interesting to see what they bring for the the live finale. Now the Hillim yesterday lost, so they're going to have to go through the crucible of beating another team yet to have a chance to get to the live finale. And that team is going to be Force and Boys, uh, which you know they did win yesterday against Team Archon, who got knocked out of the event. So, going forward, um, you know, they're still stuck with the same decks today. Then they'll be able to change them for the last uh, the last phase, obviously. Um, so, we already know what those decks are that they're playing today. It's going to be a little interesting to see how they, you know, pan out. Because all those players um, have been adapting some of their strategies based on new TGT cards. And it's not always been optimized just yet, right? Yeah. Like, the, the whole metagame is a bit uh, in flux. The uh, interesting thing about this part right now, though, is the players couldn't change their decks, right? Yep. So I'm sure what they did is they just watched the VODs, they made the lists, they copied every single card. So everyone's going to know everyone's deck. And it'll be interesting how they like approach the matchups and uh, what they want to put in first, what they think they're favored against, things like that. Yeah, so when you have perfect information, it's easier to navigate, uh, you know, your matches, obviously. So guys, before we move on with the uh, the actual game itself, we'll be showing you a recap of what's happened so far in the league. So if you guys uh, haven't really followed everything, you'll get a chance to get uh, maybe some, some of the highlights. Uh, prepare for the Patron Warriors. We'll be right back after the video. Enjoy. He was uh, pretty Almost. focused. Yeah. Back into something might matter. And turns out he just wants to go face. And is that. Oh my oh. god, the blowout. Oh, so no, well. He played it. Yeah. We saw no win condition for him, any, him anymore. And he missed. He's like out of steam. And he has Hellfire. Hellfire. Healbot next turn. Oh, wow. Oh. oh my god, the top decks are real. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, RD. This is a silly day. Yeah. This is crazy. So this is just, I don't know. It's like, can we get, can we get like Shia LaBeouf on a green screen saying that and... Front? Whoa. Oh, there it is! There's the reaction! The play right, that could actually... Oh, so he's, he's hoping for the concede. He's agonizing Trump. Well played. Well played. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, that's it. And Yara's gonna concede it, and Value Triple Down bench. goes for the crazy reverse sweep. Alex has to die. No way. We already saw one Doomsayer today. <laughs> not possible. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> They're not. It's just barely short, right? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Oh my what? god, Bro, that's gotta be hot oh, No matter what. The thing is, if the Doomguard Ooh. comes out, you're forcing Shadow of Death, in which case Cabal is a bit less... Which is fine. You have to miss yeah. play. Yeah. Miss exactly. one damage, you're gonna trade an abusive first, but he's trading anyway. Yeah, you got it. Actually, yeah. no, he healed a minion, so if it hit for six... Ooh! Oh, wait, wait, wait! He's one off one <laughs> Oh, and that one missed damage actually hot cost him the game. Yeah. All right.
right, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, before we move on words, a quick shout out to our partners from AlphaDraft.com, the Esports Fantasy League. If you want to check them out, obviously, AlphaDraft.com, you have a chance to get uh, a share of the $300,000 they give away each week. And they can match your initial deposit by up to $250. You know, it's not too bad. There's also Amazon App Store, which is doing a giveaway for 50% uh, discount on card pack. So give it a shot. Tmarcon.com slash Amazon or Amazon.com slash Hearthstone. Now that this is out of the way, um, do you do you have any uh, you know thoughts about uh, the current format? You know that uh, we're going forward into this like the best of eleven um, that's been I guess standard in the league so far. Uh, do you think it's going to be like higher pressure going to live finals, knowing that you're you have to depend on your team uh, and the I mean the stakes are really high. I mean you're playing in the event, so yeah. I don't know. Most of the time when I lose, I I'm more like upset for myself because I lost for my team. Like I'm not. Okay. It's, it's more pressure because there's a team aspect to it. I don't really like. I care if I lose, obviously, but it's it's added pressure that I have a team. Um, as for this format, I don't know. I played this format for like I guess the entire league or whatever, and I right. I'm still not used to it. It's kind of hard to pinpoint. It just it's, it's hard to figure out. Yeah, I mean, it's a single-player game, and you're having to depend on other players, and they depend on you for your, for their performance overall. Um, so this is Phase 2. You know, Phase 1's already been done. We had the round robin with every single team facing off against each other. We've had Match 1 of Phase 2 with Team Archon versus Tempo Storm to decide who would move on. Uh, and then Tempo Storm is going to make it to the live finale. The current standings show that Cloud9 and Value Town, and that includes you, dog, yes. uh, are pretty <laughs> safe, you know, for the live finale spots. But there's still a chance that, um, you know, Nihil can make it there or force and boys temple storm is guaranteed team archon is actually out so depending i mean these standings don't reflect who's going to make it to the live finale team archon was eliminated yesterday uh, so if Nihilum makes it through, they're going to have a really sick culmination to a crazy roller coaster ride uh, they've been running through going from the top of the standings i think down to the yeah. bottom and then yeah, they've been they've been top like the entire season it'd be yeah. kind of a shame if they didn't make it yeah, I, I wonder how they're going to take it if they don't. And the worst feeling must be if they win today and they go to the live finale and they finish fourth place, um, that that's going to feel hor horrible, I think. All right, so looking at the lineups here from the Hill and Force and Boys, same uh, same decks as yesterday. Life coach playing a control paladin and a patron warrior. RDU. I think he's playing, uh, I think he's playing control warrior, right? I think that was the uh, switch. Was that him playing page, uh, Control Warrior yesterday? I, I'm pretty sure it was. Why, well, sure, um, maybe. See, you say you didn't follow we'll the games, but if you... Figure it out. <laughs> okay. I, I'm pretty sure he did. We'll see. All right. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Um, so we got RDU on Shaman with mech, mech, right? Yeah, I think so. Can it be anything but mech? Really, <laughs> these days? Like, I mean, is it ever? TGT came out, got new stuff, can avoid the cancer stuff. All right, so you, you could imagine somebody bringing, like, a totem deck to a tournament. I mean, I, I think there is definitely an archetype lurking there, right? But the thing is, we were talking about this with RDU yesterday, and it turns out his thoughts on the matter um, basically go along the lines of, I'm going to play Mech Shaman, and I'm going to put Tuskar Totemic in. So it's a little, it's a little <laughs> yeah, uh, disheartening. Yeah, that, that was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I saw that. I was like, that's not going to help you top deck lethal. <laughs> a little totemic. Yeah. It's a pretty good card. I mean, it's it's almost too high variance to be uh, to to be real. Sometimes, you know, totem golem comes out on that uh, fateful turn. All right, so Skaka playing warrior versus the hunter from RDU. Uh, that favors the warrior quite uh, by quite a lot, I'd say, right? Yeah, uh, it's really really favored if you're running uh, just straight face hunter like. Patron wins that matchup so many times, like 80% or... I don't know, I'm just making up a really high percentage there. But, yeah, so they usually win that matchup. Uh, hybrid's a little harder, but it's still fairly easy. They're not easy, but still fair. Do, do you have, a, like, an analyst? Like, have you mapped out, like, mapped out all the matchups in Value Town? Like, I know you guys have been, <laughs> you know, being quite... You, you've been doing super well, honestly. It's kind of like the um, the unexpected, no pun intended, underdogs just wrecking Wait. through the tournament. Um, um, I think I think Trump has a spreadsheet, and he consults the spreadsheet, and then he linked the spreadsheet, and it was just like a bunch of percentages based on uh, <laughs> all the tournament 
results. And then he was just like, so we should go with this statistically. And I'm just like, I'm not going to not play Rogue Trump. So, <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, yeah, that's the but, reason we saw yeah, Rogue pretty much every single week. Exactly. Okay. But, but, you know, we can go with our gut feeling. Uh, speaking of Rogue, um, you know, this game is kind of slow. So I, I have a question. Do you think TGT did anything good for Rogue at all? Well, it changed the way other people build their decks, so it's a little slower, and Rogue has a little more time to react. They also aren't playing cards that are very like aggressive and do much. They're playing slow cards like Dragons, uh, so stat becomes a lot more relevant. So, and the fact that the way people are building decks, it helped Rogue a lot. The actual cards that were added did not help Rogue at all. I would build, I would build Rogue the exact same way I did prior to uh, TGT. All right, well, hopefully we see some uh, innovations on that front in the near future, but I, w I think a lot of people would tend to agree. All right, so Skaka starting with a uh, you know removal heavy hand, no weapons, of course, but when you've got an unstable ghoul that's already a pretty sick start against a hunter, you're usually very comfortable, and double slam also can carry him for a little longer. Yeah, he pointed out that ghoul against the Lopper was just pretty good, and the... The fact that he had the slam to get the freezing trap on that is so huge because you don't want that ghoul to be frozen because it's like not a good unit to get frozen, obviously, and you don't really want to waste a kill command or a quick shot on it. Uh, it just it's a bad situation for the hunter, and it was yeah, it was it, it's just worse right there. now. Yeah, everything. Like Oskaka puts his opponent in a position where there's really no answer here but a bow. Um, and a bow feels kind of awful because the, the ghoul already took what it wanted to take, which is that one drop lepernome. So even if you exactly. do play the bow, you're you're just wasting a charge on a minion that the warrior doesn't need anymore. And can you afford to kill you command afford that? this? I really like quick shot it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, can you afford the freezing trap being eaten by it as well, right? Quickly. What are you expecting next turn? You're expecting a frothing. Uh, an acolyte, an acolyte, or an acolyte frothing. or a frothing, yeah. So it looks like he wants that frozen, and I kind of agree with that. Um, I'm not sure if I agree with using the kill command over the quick shot, but I think that's. I mean, it's fine. By the way, uh, you're right. That warrior was the uh, the warrior without Grom and Alex Straza that Life Coach was playing yesterday. He doesn't have Grom and Alex Straza. What? <laughs> Don't, don't ask me, I am not the one who made the deck. It was very surprising to me. I saw, I saw a zombie chow, I remember that. <laughs> no, you saw it. no, you didn't see that. You saw the one drop, one two, that was supposed oh, that to was, be... Oh, that was in the Paladin deck, that was the, right. uh, the Inspire, yeah. So right, he, so he likes, to, likes to run those. Alright, I think if a three attack minion comes out, then already using an okay spot. Wait, is that, wait, that's three damage to your power? That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is hell. All right. Just a card too hard in the form of a two drop. RDU is pretty happy about that one. Knows that he kind of baited a slam out of his opponent as a result of this coming out. Um, you can't oh. feed a Dread Corsair into it. And that's a pretty good top deck for RDU. I wonder if he's running high mains. He might have cut the high main for a little lower curve. Because uh, I think he was running chargers. And it could be hybrid, but... You don't really run hybrid with the, uh, with Argent Squires. And it's an interesting uh, take on the like the one ones really help a lot because you're running the abusive. You know, it's not a, a card you see put in every single uh, hunter deck, but the people that do include the Argent Squire tend to get pretty good success with it just because abusive lets you trade up so nicely against decks, uh, say like Patron Warrior, where you can remove an Armor Smith a little earlier. You can deal with Acolytes of Pain nicely. Yeah, like this Dread Corsair is just going down, and you're not you losing. Just dump your hands and hope he doesn't yeah. have a whirlwind. <laughs> uh, I think you have a point because if you just cycle everything, you should. You be can fine. let a one. You can let a one one live if you do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do. You can just do everything. The question yeah. is: Is there a reason to just maybe uh, hero power instead, or is that not worth it? It depends how high your curve is. Uh, if you think that you might draw into a high main or something, then you shouldn't hear a power. If you're running shredders, high mains, things like that, you're not going to be able to dump your hands uh, every turn, so hero power like becomes irrelevant. Or not irrelevant, but you, you want to cycle into the cards that help you earlier. Yeah, That's it makes mostly. sense. So Skaka's in a bit of an awkward position because he can remove the board alright, but he can't draw anymore. And unless you can, you know... Uh, throw back the pressure the hunter's way. He's the one who's going to start falling behind a little bit. 
How do you feel about Emperor and Execute? <laughs> Over the Death Bite? Yeah, I yeah. think you're forcing your opponent to uh, either go all in on your face or spend a lot of resources removing the 5-5, five five, depending. The thing is that the Emperor doesn't really do anything aside from the body because uh, he freezing. has one card in hand. <laughs> and, and there is a freezing, yes. Yeah, maybe Death Bite Execute Armor Up is better, because you kind of need the extra health going forward if you expect this to last long. And getting that Whirlwind Effect off of the Death Bite should probably be enough to clean up the board next turn. Seems like that would be uh, the way to go. Plus you can draw into a Patron, Acolyte, anything like that. So, I do like this. Yeah, you're right, because the moment you find another... Uh, even a Battle Rage would be fine. Mm -hmm. Because you can play Emperor and then Battle Rage it if you'd like. thinks that Execute is worth more than 4 HP. So. That's interesting. Against a Hunter, I value my HP a lot. It's a good card. It's kind of smart. <laughs> when, when is it not, though? That's the question, <laughs> right? Time to smork. Hey, we can't make fun of the Hunter. There's only one place to attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> Yeah. But that's the good because he can't misplay. Exactly. There can't be a misplay if there's no minions on the board. RDU is thinking. He's he's not sure if he wants to commit the uh, animal companion to board because uh, it gets cleared by the death bite, so he loses all board immediately if he does right. play it. And if he gets a Misha, it doesn't really do that much. It pushes four damage. Um, if he gets a Hufford, he's rewarded a lot. If he gets a uh, Liak, he's kind of rewarded. So. Well, Liak is basically the same as Misha, because the warrior takes two from the Liak and three from the board, so it kind yeah, of adds up to one extra more. damage, which is five, basically. So like he values the unit more than the damage possibility. I kind of like this, because it's forcing the warrior to deal with another wave of uh, incoming damage afterwards. Hmm. That's going to be a little painful, though. Yeah, that's like... Not really what you want to be dustbutting. Do you Push just... the face and double drop? I think you need to be armoring, but at the same time you need board to um, to deal with uh, whatever he plays. Yeah, the thing about the unstable ghoul is that it can also eat up the freezing trap instead of your emperor, but if you feel like you need the health, then using the armor up and delaying the ghoul might be just perfectly fine. Yeah. Oh man. Creeper. So... Oskaka did see one kill command, right? So he can't be that afraid of... Dying. Like getting... Yeah, just dying just yet. Yeah. It's gonna be a slow grind if the hunter gets the game, I think. Do you know if he was running any wolf riders or anything? Uh, just, like, aggressive? Because, like, he had a bunch of early game, like the squire and stuff, but I'm not actually sure if he... I saw any chargers ever. He might have decided to keep the, um... The Arcane Golems because they're pushing more effective oh, damage right. per right. slot, so maybe he doesn't run the uh, the Wolf Riders on top. It's actually oh, a really good draw, the Acolyte. Yeah, Absolutely. it's gonna allow him to maybe cycle further. Not a bad pickup for RDU either, though. Yeah, it's just a solid draw. You have to go face here and shoot. I think the Patron is probably gonna win this game. Yeah, it all depends on whether or not he's able to swing back, because that Freezing Trap is going to delay him a little bit. That Execute, however, helps quite a lot, and uh, the trade on Lothab is pretty obvious. Oh, wow. Okay. You can just uh, bounce back your Acolyte, Execute Trade, play your would you ever Would you ever consider uh, executing Misha and then bouncing back Emperor, attacking and into Lothab? <laughs> would be, yeah, and then executing another, for another 6. It's, um, it's a possibility. I think you just need to armor, though. Uh, it's it's way too valuable. I might consider replaying the Acolyte as opposed to the Frothing right here. I like the Frothing more, but... Okay, so just uh, yeah. trying to get more card draw to extend your stay. Yeah, Makes but this, sense. Is, this is good. I like this a lot. You can just armor for the Execute, trade. It's a 1-1 one -one against the Frothing. You're in a good yeah. position. This this draw right here is really, really important for RDU. You need something good, like a high main, even a shredder, a weapon would be okay. That is... Double creeper, that, that's not what he wants to see. <laughs> Look at his, his face. His face oh. is telling a story. Salt was uh, so sad. Although, honestly, like those 1-1s one -ones without a whirlwind can't be cleared. So it looks ridiculous here, but RDU is going to be able to like uh, wear down his opponent a little bit of damage at a time, as long as Oskaka doesn't pick up a clear. And you can uh, just play that. Yeah, play everything. Play it. 
play the pain, run it into a one two, uh, the one two that way you draw, and then just go face the um, the frothing and armor. Because if you draw into the patron, you win instantly. Because the frothing will build up. I mean, the the thing is, the amount of pressure RDU has is only two, so that's not very much as opposed to uh, like. Well, a it's countered by the 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 hero power basically. Like, yeah. there's if if it was another class, you know, patron would of course like the the warrior uh, wouldn't live, but because you can just negate two damage every single turn, it's pretty easy. And this is what makes warriors so easy to navigate, I guess, against hunters is that the inevit the inevitability of the hero power doesn't affect you as much. So you're really just fighting board against board. Not the best ah, of pickups. It's not a very good draw either. Yeah. Wait, did he not? He ran that into face. He didn't draw there. That's interesting. Yeah, he did not attack into the one-two creeper, which he probably would have tried was... to draw for like an armor smith or something. Maybe he'll draw right now. Because if he gets and... a whirlwind, he's in a better position. Looks like he's he gets a whirlwind, a whirlwind. He's he's in heaven. Or patron. Oh, that. You Here can run in. <laughs> I might have. I might have liked him running in that. No, this is fine. All right. So, what do you pop if anything? Because I mean, you I'm guessing battle rage your, hits, right? Yeah, you want to bounce back your. Your gnomish, I think. Well, he's gonna battle rage, but what is he looking for? Is he looking to lethal this turn? He's looking for the whirlwind, most definitely. Yeah, but like, would double whirlwind be lethal or something? Because the way he's making these attacks makes it seem like. Well, I think he's if he if he whirlwinds once, he's pushing a lot of damage. I think he's pushing like upwards of another what seven, sixteen, seventeen. So you can just get armor this turn. Um, so if you push for ten here, and you're on I eight you health. I think it's too risky to push. So you have to attack into a minion with the armor smith, and then you push for 12. Yeah, see, now he's doing this. He, he messed up, because now it's going to get frozen. I think. Oh, he didn't attack. He ran out of time, that stinks. See if it bites him. Nope. Oh, already you, so mad. This is why you run Wolf Riders, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. You can't, you, you can't smork with an Argent Squire. <laughs> it improves your early game, but you can't get those mid-game pushes. At least, and at least Elven yeah. Archer, man. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the whole point of this right. deck is to get bored early, uh, and that's why it's running freezings and uh, stuff like that. If it was a smork hunter, it'd be running uh, explosives. Explosives, of course. But yeah. he was more concerned about like uh, aggro paladin, maybe zoo fighting for board early. Uh, so this deck isn't really meant to be patron. No, obviously not. And the thing is, RD knows that he's in a really awful spot. Um, the game is pretty much everything but lost at this point. With a board like this, Skaka can navigate uh, just flawlessly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like there's nothing, there's nothing here for him to lose to. Well, he's kill command. Really bad though. Like he drew creeper into creeper into squire. Like that's so so bad. Well, it happened to him yesterday. Like he, I think Nihilum yesterday had the worst streak of draws I have ever seen. I guess it compensated for the first day of the phase two, where they got like the the perfect draws, <laughs> or at least their opponents didn't get any good draws. Um, but RD is going to be having to play that hunter again. Force and boys locks up the warrior from Oskaka. Yeah. Um, it's not really a big surprise. Usually you expect Patron to eventually get a win, so getting it early, I guess, is as good as getting it late. Exactly. Um, so it's just it's a matter like a of RDU coming back. It's not a heartbreaking loss, I would say, just because right. like, the Hunter's probably going to find a win. Patron Warrior was pretty much going to find a win against your lineup, I would say. So, Yep. Uh, also, uh, if you guys want to tweet, hashtag ATLC, any thoughts on the Archon to Olympic Championships, feel free to do so. They'll show up on screen uh, during the, uh, you know, the lineup. We're going to be uh, seeing your tweets. So looking at this lineup, I don't really know if anybody has a clear edge because, you know, there's no Warlock on the Hillam side. Uh, it's a class that was very prevalent early in ATLC and somehow started being phased out. I mean, if, if it was Warlock, it wasn't Handlock anymore. Um, and it still hasn't come back at all. Yeah, that's surprising to me. I would expect just Zoo to be really strong right now. Um yeah, but I guess I guess Force and Boys uh, don't generally bring Druid, so that's why they probably decided not to bring uh, Zoo, and that's probably why they decided to bring uh, Control Warrior, because Control Warrior is you know countered by Druid, but it beats pretty much everything else. Uh, Zoo, pretty good against Druid, but they don't bring Druid, so 
works out. Yeah, so, I mean, you're trying to target Druid with Zoo. Is there anything else that you're really trying to counter? Because, I mean, Patron doesn't quite lose to it. You can. It's one of the few aggro decks that will put pressure on Patron um, if they get a decent start. But it's not... I mean, okay, so here, I have a question. What is actually... Because we were talking with RDU yesterday about how Patron is able to keep aggro in check. You know, hyper-aggressive decks, right? Like, the hyper-aggro yeah. hunter decks are being kept in check by Patron. Um, but on the other hand, you have, like, tempo decks like Zoo that do very well against Patron. What is the best, uh, you know, tempo aggro deck to counter Patron at the moment? From the your perspective, of course. To tempo aggro decks to counter Patron? Yeah. Um, probably, like, even... Mech Shaman, I guess. Okay. Does that count? That... Yeah, it does. Yeah. It perfectly does. It, it does. I would say that's probably the best, one of the best decks against Patron. Uh, All right. Well, that's probably the, uh, the what RDU was making a reference to because it's a bit tricky. I find to to find the the perfect counter to Patron just because it it keeps so many decks in check by the way it's designed. Um, that I just would say, I would say it more keeps Face Hunter in check just because of all the like AOEs it runs and. You know, it can gain Easy. armor through armor smith, yeah. And Face Hunter is like a pretty strong deck, but if Patron's around, you're just going to lose that matchup. So it looks like we have Paladin against Warlock, and Forsen is running Handlock or Zoo? Probably Zoo, right? Uh, Forsen, yeah, he was running a Zoo yesterday. He got a sick uh, streak of, of games with his Zoo at the very end there. A little misplay was made yesterday against his opponent, but he still ended up winning. So, lucky for him, he's going to have a chance to get to the live finale. Well, you know what? Forsen Boys was on the cusp of elimination, too. You know, I didn't mention that, but they, they, they are climbing back. Um, this is, of course, a big game for both teams. Uh, but Forsen Boys, if they can win this, they're going to feel... Pretty happy because they were very low on the standings at the end there. Yeah, they they were doing pretty well in the very beginning of the league, but something in the middle kind of went wrong for them. Uh, might have yeah. been RNG, might have been deck choices. I really have no idea, but they started to fall off. Uh, they're climbing back, you know. This, I mean, if they win this in the finals, it's just as good as being first or second in the league because you qualify. So that's it's really sick, especially against a team like Nihilum. Against a team like Nihilum, yeah. So, Zoo versus Paladin, the, the Paladin version from Life Coach we saw yesterday was running that Gadget Sand Jouster, the one mana 1 2 that <laughs> hopes to win a joust to become a zombie chow. Um, I, I, we were really surprised by that inclusion because even though you might win, let's assume you win 60% of the time, right? Like a really mm -hmm. good and high estimate. Let's assume you run well, and you win most of the time. Is I it ever worth it in control? I think the idea behind it is uh, the only time you really need a zombie chow. Like that is against aggro, and most of the time you're gonna win the joust against aggro because they're running a low curve, uh, and against control it doesn't heal them, so it's like better than the zombie chow in that aspect. Also, a thing not discussed too much is you actually reveal cards from your opponent's deck, so it's also how much you value that information uh, because you joust and you get to see a card, right? They get to see a card also, but maybe you don't care if they see your cards. Like, yeah, maybe you don't, you're playing Control Paladin. You think your deck is already predictable, but you want to know what you're up against. You know, if you yeah, pick I up mean, a Dread Steed awesome. in that Warlock deck, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's going down. Yeah, you you see that Doomsayer coming down, and then Dread oh, Steed following it up, and welcome to hell. See a, see a twisting Nether. <laughs> yeah, it's actually not too bad. Like if Varian Rin picks up, I wouldn't be surprised to see Twisting Nether make its appearance in uh, a Warlock deck or another. Like yeah, Control Warlock. You have two Dreadsteeds on board. Twisting Nether, Dreadsteeds stay alive. Yeah, it's beautiful. You play the Spell Slinger from your opponent, and then you can get an Ancestral Spirit, and then you can get like triple Dreadsteed. Life Coach looks young. Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> he lost. He lost the beard, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, it's probably the oh. stress. All right, let's see there how Forsen deals with the uh, with the RNG today. You know, it really <laughs> varies from day to day. Sometimes it's fine, sometimes it's it's much less fine. Ah, oh, he's definitely on the snus right now. He needs to manage the stress. This is a pretty good hand from Forsen. You generally want creepers. You want things that are uh, things that can deal with the uh, musters if they have them. And Life Coach has a really good hand as well. Double muster into consecrate mini bot. Uh, even Aldor is fine. Uh, I would, I really like Life Coach's hand. It's really, really strong. He didn't get the yeah. one drop, obviously, but mini bot mustard, consecrate. It's going to be really hard for Forsen. I think the hand from Life Coach is like the what could change. Really good juggles. Very often that'll do it. 
Uh, and this is kind of why you need the muster because if you if there's an implosion that comes up that'll already set up, you're gonna be punished for it really hard. <laughs> Turn one rope. Turn one rope, yeah, because he's thinking, you know, it's if I decision, coin mini bot, yeah. yeah do I want my muster as faster? Do I want to keep coin for consecrate? On yeah, he's three? considering he's considering like all the things. Like you have to play in like three or four turns in defense. Uh Forston is already tilting from the time it takes. <laughs> he He's like, you've got to be kidding me, man. This can't be real. Uh, this is beautiful. I wonder Forston's if you right. mini bot. You mini bot here. You can't play muster. Muster is too weak. I think. I mean, yeah, if you if you right. go for muster, then your consecration is delayed and it still doesn't do much. So you really need to get some way to pop the creeper. And mini bot is probably the closest thing you've got exactly. uh, when you follow it up with a muster for battle on turn three. God, Life Coach's hand is just sick, though. It's, it's Amazing. really, really strong, yeah. Forson's got to learn to tab when he plays. <laughs> I mean, I don't, know how people, I don't know how people play Hearthstone without. If I don't have five other windows open, I can't play the game. Exactly. I don't know how people. Pull, I don't know how people pull it off. I mean, it. It's it's crazy. Well, this is a pretty okay uh, okay pickup for Forsen. It's yeah. a high threat minion in this case. It's gonna, gonna set up a nice implosion too if uh, your opponent goes for an implosion. I think he's gonna abusive his. Uh... Oh wow, he's not gonna abusive. He's just gonna go face. I thought it was going to abusive the. Voidwalker, and if it hit, Void he'll trade. To hit. And then yeah, go exactly. face. Yeah, I'm not sure if, if that's even better than this play, though. It's, it's I mean, this is definitely weaker to Consecration. Yeah, but, but you've got are you really scared of Consecrate right now? No, not so much. No, that's the thing. Like, It's weaker to Consecration, but at the same time, uh, if the Consecration falls down now, then you have oh, a better wow. chance of establishing a, a future board. He's going to go for the Lucky Joker. That. Oh my god. This Consecrate, okay. He's not going to go all the way. Well, Consecration is still amazing, though. Do you Consecrate here? Do you Muster? Consecrate oh, clears yeah. all but one. The thing is, he, Forsen's though, kind of okay with him, uh, Consecrate just because he has the Implosion. Yeah. Uh, that's why he didn't pop the Creeper. I vote for Muster. I vote Say for yay. Muster mm. as well. All right. Motion goes through. We Muster. <laughs> No. He might be scared of a. Uh, he might be scared of uh, like an Argus, because one play plays around the implosion, the other plays around the Argus. This plays around the implosion. But the thing is, if he Argus is, I feel like you can just true still, or you can consecrate as well and have the the weapon to clear it. Yeah, the monster for battle and the the one ones and the uh, the con the consecration together should take care of a defensive Argus. But maybe he's afraid of taking too much damage in the process. Yeah, you just have to double implosion. implosion. Okay, the good thing here is it can't fail. Oh, nice job, two implosion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. For, it's the karma for BMing. Yeah, you got it from yesterday, man. That BM was well. Then again, Firebat did go That's for true. it. That's true. Yeah, you have to return the favor. Exactly. It was I get the feeling Firebat was legitimately saying sorry, right? Like <laughs> I, I get that vibe. Whenever Firebat goes for the BM, I'm like, he's actually apologizing <laughs> for a skill stone. I don't know uh, about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. man, life coach's muster or er, implosion hit for three there. He got three little units. Let's do it. Three. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. okay. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. Right. But this knife juggler into muster, Force is gonna be so mad. Oh my goodness. Let's see it. Let's yeah. see it. Oh, and a Tusk card jouster just to seal up the health total to a very comfortable position. Force and thinks, oh, I'm gonna have four minions next turn, right? Like, they can play Gormok after top decking a two drop. Nope. Definitely not happening. <laughs> Also, by the way, what do you think of Gormok? Uh, I thought the card was going to be super sick, but I haven't really been impressed by it so far trying it out. It's really hard to set up. I thought it would be really bad, but it has gotten a little more use now. Okay, uh, so you thought it was going to be worse, so you were impressed, yeah. and I thought the exact opposite. I was a little opposite. more impressed, yeah. Interesting. Double quality in life coach and stuff. Horson's face is uh, telling the story of his woes. That's an okay pickup, I guess. Aside from the fact that 
Aldor Peacekeeper deals with it. It's a pretty good pickup. Yeah, Force and Sight can be too happy about this. I think True Soldier <laughs> might just be better here. <laughs> Poor Force and nothing's going to ride this game. Man. And both implosions are gone, so you don't really have a, a very good comeback potential because that's what, uh, yeah. you know, like Knife Juggler implosion or something like that is usually how you get bored back a zoo. But right now, the only thing he can really do is like hope for an egg or something to uh, PO and to trading. Yeah, and then you have to also top deck if you like the Doom Guard top decks could still help you come back in the game um, sure. from your perspective, of course. But when you see Life Coach's hand from you know the caster side, uh, it's much easier to see that he won't really have too much trouble with it between Aldor equalities and the uh, health restoration. Usually, he's going to be very comfortable no matter what hits. All right, so he's opting for the. Uh, Aldor Peacekeeper play. He was hoping for a juggle there, I think, to, to get a good trade. Does he does he just trade into it because he doesn't want to see a Defendo Argus? Might. I'm, I'm not sure. Looks like he's going to. To be fair, Life Coach's hand was like ridiculously good against Zoo. I don't think there was anything Forcing could have done. Maybe not rolled a 2 on that implosion. That would have helped. Right. <laughs> Feels bad, man. Yeah. Forsten just concedes. I mean, he knows at this point there's no way for him. Like, the whiplash mechanic is just not there, right? When implosion's gone, knife juggler implosion is one of the best ways to handle um, some kind of mid game silver hand recruit heavy board, and that just was already gone, so. Yeah, uh, it's pretty unfortunate that he, drew, he rolled the two there, and I don't know. He even set up for, like, a pretty good, like, bait consecrate into, like, where he could play the uh, implosion, but he kind of got punished by a knife juggler muster. Muster into knife juggler muster when your board is all one ones is kind of hard to deal with. I would yeah, say. but it was a really good win for life coach though because his paladin had a little bit of trouble when we saw it play, uh, you know, yesterday. So it's nice to see that his paladin is already out of the way. Nihila must be feeling pretty good about this. Um, because that Paladin wasn't exactly... I mean, the, that one two that you mentioned uh, had some potential against Control. It, it really backfired hard yesterday. Like, it could have won the game against Druid had it been a zombie chow. Um, so yeah. it's kind of uh, Actually, like a weird that, gamble. That win was really important, the Paladin getting out. Because yeah. I feel like Hunter would beat it. Uh, I feel like Shaman would probably beat it. Aggro Paladin maybe beat it. You know, Freeze Mage uh, is going to beat it. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, Agro Pally. Th how, what do you think about Agro Pally versus the control uh, side of Paladin? Because they tend to both <laughs> play the earlier. Like they both play some of the early game, but the Paladin can stabilize maybe a bit better. It's just that if you're not running wild pyros, which just don't exist anymore in Control Pally, even yeah. nowadays, um, it's really hard to get rid of those, all the divine shields. It's kind of like the exactly. warrior syndrome. Where you just need weapons. muster. You need my juggler, and you need consecrated for the control Paladin, but. The aggro paladin, I don't know. The qualities aren't going to do anything if all your creatures are at 1 HP anyways. and You can just smork them and try to get a divine favor. Um, but that matchup won't be happening. I wonder yeah. what Nihilum will go with next. It's 1-1 one, one right now. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to see the Shaman from RDU eventually. Uh, it's one of the decks that I we haven't really seen too much of, so... Seeing what he plays, he says he plays Mech Shaman with Tuskar Totemic. I wonder how... I mean, he seems to agree that that was the line of Shaman deck building at the moment that was the most consistent until we see new decks crop up. Um, I wonder if they're working on... Because I, I, a lot of people are trying to make Shaman work that isn't Mech, right? Like trying yeah. to go back to the mid-range style, uh, maybe a control style, something along those lines. And at the moment, nothing has quite come up that is better than Mech Shaman, right? They, there's a lot of good variants with the uh, Thunderbluff Val Valiant, which is doing amazing. Yeah. Um, but when when you don't curve, that deck still falls behind a lot of the time. Exactly. I, I think it's a decent deck. I would say it's about on par with uh, Control Paladin. Yep. Which, I mean, Life Coach Tier 1.5, so. Tier 2, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Somewhere around yeah. those lines. That's, that's like a perfect rating for it, I would say. So we got this Hunter versus Hunter. Yeah. And the uh, Argent's Choir in the starting hand for RDU is definitely a good pickup against uh, in this matchup. It's going to help you get a two for one out of almost no investment. Really. Yeah, with Glaive Zuka, that's ridiculous. Did he keep a freezing trap? That's interesting. I guess he, he wanted to freeze like a mad scientist or something because he's expecting a coin creeper or coin mad scientist here. Huh. I would have never thought he would keep a uh, freezing trap. 
I mean, I guess if you're trying to race for damage, getting that tempo lead is basically going to snowball. Like, Freezing Trap is basically deal 4 damage to your opponent. Exactly. I mean, yeah, that's what it's doing it's right now, right? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. Huh. Uh, is, uh, are you going to return the favor? <laughs> <laughs> that's what we have the to know right freezing. now. You want to play that game? I think play Zuka, and you're not too unhappy about your one one getting frozen. That's not a big investment. It's just that you're going to be face tanking that Lepronome, and that's four damage. Like so far, the Lepronome has dealt six, and that's a exactly. lot of damage yeah. output. That's a good freezing chart. Wow. That's a very oh. good top deck. Yeah, I was gonna say knife juggler is kind of weak because of the fact. Oh, the punish. Summon Misha? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Trade? Nope. No face. And yeah, Chalky's good at hunter. <laughs> Chalky's the best hunter player I've ever seen. He always gets the huffers. Although it, it seems like recently uh, the huffer is to hunters what fiery war axe is to, to warriors these days. Nobody Always misses added. their war axe. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Yeah. In this tournament so far, it's been it's been amazing. I like this play from uh, RDU. I might have liked the creeper more than the freezing chop, but I guess he's anticipating the shredder, which I mean, Chalky has, so that's very good. Yeah, but I think if Shocky knows that, he's gonna definitely just drop the juggler in the abusive, hope to trigger the trap with the abusive sergeant, and then play maybe a low tab on curve. Um, so that's going to be yeah. Looks pretty like decent follow. Happen. Yeah, the the weak the weak uh, the weak part of this play, I guess, is the fact that you're not really getting any damage in this turn. But the fact that the opponent will be face tanking the juggler is effectively giving you three damage if that's gonna happen. He's not face tanking it. He's gonna face tank the. Yeah, the because it's gonna instead. get frozen anyways. Right. That makes sense. I mean, y you don't mind taking two instead of three since nobody's gonna replay a juggler for four mana. This not anytime soon. Really crazy. So he ended up doing that one extra damage anyways through the juggle. But right. this Lothab is going to go uncontested. Oh, that's a really big pickup if he hits the juggle. Because now he, he doesn't have to take five. Lothab was going to connect for five there almost like for sure. But, he, but believe me, he's going to get a Wrath Guard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the nightmare. He needs to hit one juggle. There we go. All right. Let's get it. Here comes the Wrath Guard. No, it's actually Whoa, a great card. Is, yeah, what exactly. a sick pickup. And RDU now sees a potential win. It, it looked everything but lost when you're so far behind on health in a raise situation. Wow, RDU is picking this up. Alright, not a bad card to find. I think... Do you make trades at all here or do you just I push? I think you might want to smork. Um, I'm thinking when you're so far behind, you have you to can, just uh, hope he doesn't have You can it. kill the creeper, so you can protect your divine shield, and I'm not opposed to that. And then you pop the creeper on the... You, you, the... Yeah. Shredder, sorry. Uh, but then Unleash becomes more punishing, right? I don't know if I would do this. This is... yeah. I'm not sure if Chalky's even running Unleash, and I think RDU might know that. Ugh. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good <laughs> Shredder job, uh, I would say. Chucky's really good at Hunter. I thought he was just good, but he's really good. <laughs> is that is he running Explosive? If he's running Explosive, that's like insane. I don't know. I feel like that was a lot of wasted damage. Well, if he runs Explosive, in this case, it might let three minutes live, right? Ooh, oh, freezing. that's... I think uh, they're running very similar lists. It looks like it. Freezing like Smork. Hybrid without... High mains or something? I don't think I've seen a high main. I, maybe Chalky has one. I haven't seen it so far, so there's a good chance that neither player plays it. I mean, it's the type of card that really curves the deck up, and the Argent Squires give you that extra trading potential, and in a metagame that's riddled with Divine Shield Paladin, the aggro value list, I think there's a good argument to be made for not uh, for running the Squires. Because the high mains yeah. basically do nothing, right? It's like, you're already dead by the time that comes out. Wow. All right. Pretty convincing. Uh, juggle, or juggle here. Or nice job. Yeah. I, I if you know he's not running unleash, that trade's fine. And it looks like RDU does, because I mean, they played what over three games each with their decks at least. Yeah. So they should know the decks card for card. 
Not what Shocky was looking for, and I think this is a lost game for him at this point. Is there enough he, damage on board? I he think can't so. kill Leok. That's for sure. Yeah. That alone is enough to be a problem, because even if you kill the Juggler, and you kill the Anoyotron, and you hit the Hero Power for 2, mm -hmm. how do you find an extra 14 damage, or 11, since you have the bow? Like, 11 from a single top deck? That's looking very unlikely. Maybe like Quick Shot into Quick Shot. Yeah, no, there's like no way, I don't think. So he's just gonna have to smork it to face and he's hope he picks up the Unleash. He, yeah, I don't even think he runs Unleash. I think he's just hoping to top deck like double Quick Shot into like Leroy or something. I mean, it's not unreasonable. He just needs one quick shot into a, a arcane golem or something. So he's playing Discouts. Well, uh, this is going to seal game, the game I regardless, think. because if it's a taunt, it's like enough, right? Yeah. Uh, Leok and Huffer were guaranteed lethal. I think he still has it, though, or maybe he's just like one off. He's going to be one off. Wow. Interesting. And now even Unleash doesn't do it. Yeah, that was a really well piloted deck uh, by like the piloted game by RDU. I thought like the the line of play that we saw with the freezing trap where he decided to coin it out to regain the the that tempo. That was a that was that... Chalky, I believe. Chalky played the freezing trap. He kept it in his opening hand. He had Lepernome freezing trap. No, no, no. Uh, no, that was oh, that oh, was the, 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 the coin. Freezing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah the, the other second one. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay, instead of playing the creeper yes. to uh, to prevent the shredder, that was a good play. I agree. That was interesting. I, a lot of people would have played Creeper there, and then the guy would have played Shredder, and then he would have just lost, probably. So, good play, yeah. I agree. It's not every day that I find a Hunter Mirror match uh, super interesting. I'll be <laughs> honest with you, it's one of the matches that I... Like, Hunter Mirror match is interesting. Hunter matches I find sometimes a little dull when they're on the hyper-aggressive side, because you kind of see everything kind of snowball. But I thought RDU was lost for sure there. I thought for the most yeah. part that was game. But the Anoyotron is, again... Um, his saving grace, right? Like, there's only, what, one other taunt? Uh, two other taunts. Frostwolf Grunt and Unstable Ghoul. Unstable Ghoul would have wrecked his board, which would have been a problem. Um, and the Frostwolf Grunt would have done very little in the face of, you know, re repeated damage input, so... Yeah, I think it was a Knife Juggler to pick up on the Lothab turn. He had no way to deal with Lothab. He was at, like, 17 HP, picked up a Knife Juggler, and then he, like, just traded his Shredder and was able to kill the Lothab. Which yeah. is really important. Otherwise, he would have been at like what 12 plus hero power 10. He would have been dead in like a few turns. Uh, and the Anoyotron coupled with that was pretty insane. Yeah, so Hashaki may always get the Huffers, but RDU gets the good Shredders. I guess that ends up mattering a bit more. Uh, there's the Druid on Thais' side, you know, Darnassus Aspirin. We've been talking about this a bit. I know you're a big Druid aficionado from back in the days. How excited are you to play Druid going forward in TGT? I, I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it anymore? That's yeah, it? I don't, you, I don't you, like you it surrender? anymore. I'm done with that class. <laughs> okay, that's it. You're just going to be uh, playing Rogue for the rest of your days? Exactly. <laughs> All right. I don't know. Darnassus uh, Aspirin or whatever. I don't even know how to pronounce it. I don't think it's as good as most people are leading on. Wild Girl seems just straight up better. It almost always dies on turn two, and if you're fighting for board, it's only a 2-3, so I don't know. I'd much rather have a Wild Growth in many cases. You can run it as another ramp card, I would say, but I'm not sure how uh, how much I like it. That's just a... Uh, so you're not, you're not sure how, how good like how good it is to have four wild growths in your deck. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it's maybe just a bit too much. So just two wild growths would be more than enough to ramp. Yeah. All right, that's interesting. Two, that's probably the two first wild and, uh, opinion I've heard. Yeah, two wild growths and a Darnas is probably one of the better ways to go about it. So warrior versus hunter, and this is. This is Control Warrior with Zombie Chow, right? <laughs> right, right. That's the most anti aggro tech warrior I think I've seen in a long time. Um, there's no Alex, no Grom. It's even more defensive than you might think. There's an Isera, which is very slow, so I guess ultimately it's it's not uh, it's not necessarily a good card to have because you can't burst your the hunter down at the end of the game, but you should be able to stabilize for a very long time. I know he's running one bash, which is an incredible card. Uh, I think in Control Warrior, especially if you're trying to target those, you know, mid-range, uh, you know, aggressive decks. And I think Hunter from Shock, he's going to suffer from that bash sometime during the game. Yeah, it's going to come down to early draws for Life Coach, so he can definitely whiff, and Shocky can take the board early and just do too much damage to him. But we'll see. <laughs> he's running bash also. That's right. Oh my goodness. I love the bash. 
There's no way you're throwing that back if you're life coach, knowing what Shalky's playing. It's such a... So, a lot of people didn't really like that card too much at first, but I think after you've played it once or twice, you you actually fall in love with it. Because it's reaching... Like, it's basically your, your safeguard Fire War Axe. If things go super wrong, you can still kill that minion and recover the health, so you're creating like a 6 health differential, sometimes 9, uh, because of repeated damage potential. Pretty strong card. So... Do you play Coin Scientist here? And Juggler is weak to War Axe. Yeah, I was going to say, you have yeah. to bait the War Axe hit with okay. uh, Mad so he, Well, he, he figures if he has War Axe, he has to play the 2-drop into 2-drop anyways. But this just allows him from like going Mad Scientist into maybe drawing a Creeper. Life Coach picks up the second Armor Smith, so that's that's pretty solid. If you're looking at, the, at this from a... Uh, Defensive perspective, I don't think Life Coach can actually lose enough health to be threatened anytime soon. Like, there's no RMB Cowl in Shockey's hand. Pretty de the, the bow is going to be great here, though. Like, that's the closest to a great pickup as he could have had. I'll show them. I'll show them all. He's going to get himself, like, another freezing trap. Wow. Zombie Chow! Right. Life Coach has one of the better hands that I've seen, I think, against the situation yeah. where you're trying to control the board against some, ty some type of aggressive deck. But Shalky picked up the bow, so that's going to allow him to get back on the board in some way. That bow is a really important pickup. I don't expect Life Coach to be attacking into that anytime soon. Into, or yeah. like proccing the trap anytime soon. Might as well just play this like an armor smith, armor up, have a good time with your armor gain on the board. What now? Do you just play armor smith, hero power, and get even more armor out of uh, the future turns? I think you have debating. a voucher to go through. Go ahead. He's debating whether or not to play the, the despite or the armor smith. Because he wants to contest the board quickly and then just like get it. So, you know, he only has to play chargers. But yeah, armor smith's good because next turn you're going to be playing the belcher. And <laughs> it's going to be hard to deal with that belcher without giving him like a ton of armor. Yeah. Does Shocky have the iron beaks here? I mean, I, I think I've seen them yesterday. So he definitely runs those. I mean, you couldn't possibly run some kind of hybrid hunter deck uh, without, our, without iron beaks, I think. It's suicide for the most part, at least. Not the best of draws. Not the best of draws for life coach. But yeah. I mean might, might come he's in handy in later. Good position. Right? Uh, you just play the Belcher. He's scared of a silence. That's the only thing that really counters your Belcher. But if Jockey doesn't have the silence, like no. how does he deal with this board? I don't think he can. So, yeah. Yeah, never trigger the trap, never give him an extra charge, and just wait this game out. There's no way you can fall behind on health for the time being. This is rough for Chucky. <laughs> you can proc the trap next turn if you want to and start clearing the board. Uh, but you don't do it until you can start making plays that uh, benefit you. Whereas opposed to, you know, just proc procking it, giving an extra charge, taking away from your armorsmith. I mean, if he finds a Doomsayer off of the Shredder... <laughs> he could pull it off because you'd have to attack into the sh the the belcher with the shredder and with the abusive sergeant then you pop the slime with the three one and if he doesn't have an execute it's true that would help oh man shock is just it's going all it. in flood oh, the board fine. and hope uh, something sticks it's like throwing so spaghetti on the wall right Throwing spaghetti on the west. <laughs> Throwing spaghetti on the wall and hope it sticks. You've never done that, have you? My childhood was full of amazing memories. You're just throwing spaghetti on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And hope it sticks. Oh, man. Not very dangerous, but it's <laughs> fun. Wonderful. Pretty much what Chucky's doing here. So we'll see if uh, if Life Coach opts to develop the Dead's Bite here. I'd imagine he will, right? I mean, it's kind of a time to trigger the trap, if ever. I don't. I don't think you have to trigger the trap, but you can use the dust bite right now and armor up. Okay. And then next turn you'll get the whirlwind effect from both armor smiths. It'll be a good time. What? Now? Yeah. And then Chalky will be upset.
That makes sense. I mean, your turn seven is still pretty sweet anyway, because you can even re-equip the death bite if you want. Oh, he's proccing the trap. Interesting. And here we go. Will he replay this? There's a good yes. reason to. I mean, yeah. there's no reason. Why would you not at this point? You just get so much armor for each attack that happens. Yeah, you even initiate the trades. Not Pagel! Pagel. Ooh, <laughs> this draw is going to be really important. Let's see if Pagel draws Got and it. it does. Wow, crazy good. Iron Beak. Oh, hello. Uh, a little late to the party, mate, I but... It's, I think it's pretty late. Yeah. I mean, you can go for a Iron Beak Owl on the Belcher, Freezing Trap, and kill one of the Armor Smiths with the bow. And then quick shot the Belcher if he wants. It's all kind of weird, but... I don't even know how you navigate this turn. Are I mean, you trying I'd to iron look for the owl, the uh, the belcher and kill with the creeper, right? You can iron beak owl the one four armor smith if you want. Oh. I kind of like the whole freezing trap, the second armor smith plan. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's, yeah. It's, if he does this, he needs to. Yeah, attack you get a hero power to too. First. Yeah, I, you're right. This is good. Shocky. Suddenly confused. I was smorking. What's wrong? Oh wow, Nat Bagel is gonna get in for some action. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that. All right, so that's a pretty good play here from Shocky. I'm liking this. Remember the old Miracle Road days when uh, <laughs> they ran Pagel? Yeah, and it was so and, uh, broken. You could cold, you could cold blood it. <laughs> it was like yeah. a combo. It was like a legit combo. So funny. Nat Bagel early game. Into cold blood, you're like, really, really, <laughs> this is happening to me. I've got nothing but a war axe. What do I do? <laughs> four, four, the draws. So much value. At the end of the turn, too. Exactly. So I don't think you want to feed this this uh, bow anymore, or the bow anymore. Yeah, I think you want to get out the dust bite. The question is, do you want to play the pain? I'd probably just play the pain here. Yeah. Because next turn you can, I mean, it's such a good situation for a life coach because his death bite will kill literally everything and net him some armor on the back end. This is this is probably the only answer to a massive board like this in Control Warrior because unlike Patron, they don't run whirlwinds anymore. Some older variants used to. Wow, that's that's a lot of damage. You just push it. Because I mean, it, it's not. An, it, it looks like a lot, but if you if you really think about it, the um, armor smith becomes kind of scary. If you yeah. kill the armor smith in one fell swoop, it's more damage, I think. Actually, yeah, with the kill command. So you deal five to the armor smith, overkill by one. Um, I go face. But I think it's then... still okay. I mean, could you ever quick shot the armor smith and trade a one one into it? Isn't that the same amount of damage, or is it less? You're you're not overkilling, but I mean you're losing the recurrent damage on the one one that you think you were gonna lose anyway from the death bite. Sure. Well, Shocky smorks it. All right, let's yeah. do it. I don't mind this. He's one belcher, and uh, he's gonna push for damage and hope, hope it works out. In this case, unfortunately for him, uh, life coach Dang. should be able to stabilize. That's there. a lot of burst. So much damage there. He's wondering if he should attack in, uh, based on. If he draws another weapon, or if he needs the the attack, it looks like he determines he needs the attack. This bash is going to be pretty big, also. So, do you play the cruel taskmaster just for the armor that it gives, or do you play sure. the Sylvanas right now just for the armor it gives, and then armor up and then go face, and then next turn you have bash and cruel taskmaster? I like the idea of cruel task. Because Cruel Task would effectively give, you one give extra two armor. armor. Yeah, because exactly. Because it's an extra body on the board and the mm. one damage. So he I mean, you could even play Sylvanas and Cruel Task. It's the same as getting armor up, basically, in yeah. this case. And but you it's worse against uh, Unleash, but like, there's no Unleash. I, I like Sylvanas because it fights for board against a Shredder. And then oh, there's man. like almost no chance you die this turn, I think. I think there's no chance you die. 3, Three 4, 5. He needs to he find 10 to damage. Cool. Leroy is not lethal. Le Leroy Arcane Golem would kill you, actually. No, because you can't hear power. No, but Leroy, is, that's 10, and you've got 3 from the bow. Oh, yeah, you're right, you can't hear yeah. power. Never mind, that's not 5. What is math? <laughs> I don't math know what is math true. is. I don't play patron. I don't do math. <laughs> patron. 
So, this is Chalky's second time in a row. If he loses here, he's actually benched. Yeah, and that's gonna give uh, Nihilum a good chance to isolate other decks because they're already up. If they win this, they're gonna be up 3-1 with the edge on the benching rule, and that's gonna give them the ability to just pilot every other deck uh, almost optimally for the matchups. Yeah. And God look at the bash. amount of armor, man. <laughs> yeah, I think you might even bash your own Sylvanas, <laughs> then Cruel Tasker to take that Worgen, just to spite Shocky. Oh gosh. <laughs> is that the play? Is that the play? This is ridiculous. <laughs> How is a hunter like, supposed to yeah. win against Bash? Armor's cheating, man. <laughs> <laughs> so first Taunt is cheating, now Armor is cheating. I think uh, it's about time uh, we get a card, and I mean that. Like It's about time we get a card that does something to Armor, though. I think we need some form of armor removal tool I can in neutral. See that. They have like a, a minion they... that removes armor or something, because yeah. sometimes it gets uh, a little out of hand, to it put really it mildly. It really does. Right? Like 60 armor over 30 health, you're like, I didn't even play this game. Like, uh, this guy just <laughs> stacked up everything. I mean, they have a hate card for uh, for demons, right? Yeah, they so even made that one to sound exactly. demons. Right, good point. So why wouldn't they have one for uh, armor? I mean, sure, the, the problem with that is that it seems like it's only affecting warriors. I mean, there's Ice Barrier that counts, and it's basically an anti-warrior card at that point. It, it's not even... Like, who do you give it to? Just hunters or neutrals? Right? Because, like, who cares about removing that armor? <laughs> give it to most, hunters. <laughs> going piercing that. shot, remove <laughs> all Pierce, armor, you, deal wow, 5 yeah, damage. See, that, you can even name it. That <laughs> sounds awesome. Uh, let's do this. Uh, imagine the hate Blizzard gets when they made that card, though. I can already see the uprising on Reddit. Warriors are in a pretty good position right now. Like the the class itself, I don't think it. I think it deserves the hate. Yeah, no, I I would tend to agree. They're not. Uh, they've got two really viable archetypes at the moment. God, Bash, Bash is just like. I'd be cheat. so mad it's if cheating, I saw. Man. It's, it's, so, so, it's such a cheat. I know. I'd, I'd be so mad <laughs> if I saw a bash against me when I'm playing Hunter. Like shield block. You're like, okay, like I can understand that. I anticipated the shield block. Then bash comes out. It's like, why am I even playing this game? <laughs> shield block, bash. Come on, life coach. You gotta show the bash. You can't not bash. If only for style points. Life coach is not too much about style, though. He's very much about optimized plays down to the uh, the very last one, no matter what. What I find fascinating is his ability to talk to himself for a long period of time and still stay sane. <laughs> Who said he's still sane? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, last time I was casting him, there was this mad scientist look about him. Like the hair and everything was... Uh, Whoa, he's going, what is he doing? He's like going in. Oh, he's putting in, like, he's trying to lethal him. Yeah, he, he's got lethal next turn. That was an interesting play, wow. I like he it. Has, uh, I mean, he has lethal next turn anyways with the cool Taskmasters on board, right? Right, exactly. I was just uh, having the, the damage dealing. Alright, well, Life Coach picks up a win for his team, so the Warriors locked out. Life Coach doesn't quite get, uh, you know, the play again today because he's got his check mark, which is pretty yeah. sweet. RDU and Thice will have to get their wins uh, on the back of this. Now, Force and Boys, I believe Shockey's benched, unless I'm mistaken. Um, he just won twice in a row against Nihilo. Yeah. So, that's going to be a bit rough. That's going to be a bit rough. Force and we know has uh, one deck left in Oskaka. Uh, two decks left in Oskaka has one. So, they're going to be carrying Target. the team, basically. Well, they're, they're going to get targeted pretty hard. So, Chalky's I think, is benched. Um, so, Freeze Mage... Zoo and Mech, and you have Druid, Mage, and Shaman. All right. Huh. So, what are you hoping for at this point? If you're if you you're in Hillum, what are you targeting? Shaman? Yeah, there's a Freeze Mage, right? What do you do about the Freeze Mage? You just queue Druid into it. But what if you face off against Zoo or Zoo the Shaman? And, Zoo and better. Shaman are too good against Druid. I would feel like. Yeah. Everything's pretty good against Druid. They could just sweep Druid, honestly, but I would probably go for the Shaman or the Mage if I was on Nihilum. 
So I guess the mage is a coin flip against Force and Mage. Against Zoo, you have the edge, and against Mech Shaman, you can hold your own depending on how good your early game is. It's just that Mech Shaman can get crazy blowouts against Freeze Mage sometimes, right? Like they yeah. don't let you secret up, and then the game is over. I I wouldn't be opposed to Freeze Mage, but Freeze Mage is pretty good against whatever Jockey has, also, right? It's good against uh, Base Hunter, Paladin. Maybe you just queue mage and be happy with it. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, you're you're probably having like you have an edge over. It, it all depends on whether or not Thais thinks he's got the edge in the mirror match, right? Like you're a very experienced freeze mage player, I think. Like I've seen you play a lot, and you seem to know your freeze mage. Yeah. Um, Thais is another one of those players that I've that I rate very highly on the freeze mage scale. Uh, Forsen's been playing the deck since the beginning of Hearthstone, I think, <laughs> pretty much at this stage. So they're both, if they go up against each other, I think it's going to be a uh, pretty yeah, interesting be a good match. We have uh, Mage versus Shaman. And this is Mech Shaman, right? Yeah, it is the Mech Shaman from Oskaka. We saw him pilot. Oskaka has a very nice playstyle with Mech Shaman. He's uh, much more conservative than myself, at the very least, and most players that I've seen play it. Uh, he goes all in much less frequently. He makes trades for much longer than I'd expect, and that's put him in a lot of better positions than I ever thought he could be in. So he's definitely a competent player of the class and the, the archetype. A lot of this comes down to the very, very early draws, like usual, of course. Because uh, sometimes the Shaman can just like have a... a Whirling's Appomatic, and the mage doesn't have a Frostbolt, so, you know, you have no way to deal with that until you can, like, fireball a Whirling's Appomatic, and by that time you've taken so much damage. Uh, so it really comes down to the Shaman's early draws, and if they're running, like, Doomhammer for, like, you know, the 16 damage throughout the game, things like that. Yeah, and I think the, the Frostbolt is an auto-keep just because Appomatic exactly. is such a big exactly. threat. Like, there's no way you can afford not ha not keeping it. And Oskaka has got an okay hand. I mean, there only is one one drop in that deck uh, at the moment, which is the Cogmaster. And you're pretty much, if you're first uh, off the coin, you pretty much rely on it to get you started a little bit. Yeah. I like that keep from Tice. That's exactly what I would have done. And there's the Doomhammer. That card is really, really important in this matchup. That represents 16 damage, at least, excluding the Rockbiters. Yeah, we made a comparison yesterday about it. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to RDU and I was like, this is basically like playing Doomhammer against Control Warrior. And he said, yeah, but now you don't even have Harrison Jones, so it's guaranteed to be 16 damage. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can't argue with the fact that that card is just completely insane in the matchup. Exactly. Like, it counters the two ice barriers in a single card. Ugh, I hate this position. I mean, I guess... You almost maybe you go for the Earth Shock and curve uh, Power Mace next turn into turn four Mech. That's what I'm thinking. Or is, I, is that not know. worth it? You could go with the Mech Warper and go face, but if he kills your Mech Warper with a ping, then you don't have another Mech to combo your uh, Cogmaster with, so it's kind of irrelevant. Uh, I think you might want to save the Earth Shock for maybe like a Doomsayer. Maybe that's what he's yeah. thinking, or maybe a Mad Scientist even. So I don't expect the Earth Shock. I'm just wondering if he's going to trade. Looks like he is going for their shock. Interesting. So I have to assume it's either going to be a hope for a two drop mech, which would put him pretty far ahead on board, or yeah. develop the power mace and set up a turn four play with his own mechs. That would be uh, my expectation at this point. Easy. Cycle with Thalnos. Uh, yeah, I like it. You don't want a Frostbolt to 1 2. Even if it's a 3 2, you're more concerned about a Whirling's Appomatic or something like that. Lava All right, so going, uh, it's kind of going according to plan in a way. Yeah, he this was is going hoping for, for Tice, but... though. Yeah. yeah. Playing off curve the last two turns to feel, doesn't feel very good. That's a great card for Tice to find. Yeah, next turn he can play it. This turn, not so much. I mean, he's got answers to Zapomatic, no matter what, basically. Like, the only time where he doesn't kill it outright is when he's used up the Fireball and the Power Mace hits. Um, on the Zapomatic, for instance. Yeah, this turn's interesting. I'm not sure if he would run in the Thalnos and just ping this turn. 
I don't really like on the Meg with, Warper. Yeah, the Frostbolt. I mean, you can do that. That's fine as well. I can see what you mean though, because committing the Frostbolt here means if something else comes up next turn, then you're forced to use premium removal or AOE removal on like very few targets, for instance. Yeah. Uh, oh, weapons. wow. That's <laughs> a lot of weapons to the face. Uh, the thing is, if you calculate all the damage he's got here, he's basically holding lethal just off of weapons and the lava burst. So all he has to he? do is hit face every turn. That's 16, or that's uh, 16 plus 12 plus... Plus lava burst. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> he uh, just so pushes. It's a, it's a lot of damage. <laughs> it's a lot of turns, okay. too, which is the yeah, problem. it's a lot of turns. Yeah, that's the biggest issue I think you're running into here is you have to push face every turn. But the interesting thing is the power maces, um, because they're going to be spaced out, will probably allow you to find a mech before you trigger the death rattle. So you should be able to find enough time to get something to use them on and benefit from the, the death rattle effect. Is Oskaka running uh, Fell Reavers? Do you know? I haven't seen them though. I think there's Fireguard Destroyers in there. Ooh, those are pretty good. Yeah. So much burst. Like, do you have to go for the Doom Hammer now? Like, attack in, play a Doom Hammer, and attack into the Thalmos, and then go face, just to develop it. You can start like lava bursting now if you want. Like, go for totem and lava burst, but I don't know. So if you if you lava burst this turn, then you're expecting to power mace again next turn, right? You're not I putting like, out the Doom Hammer, right? I like the Doom Hammer. And then he, he gets to attack, attack again. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like he's gonna go face. Yeah. Perfect. This is devastating. Like the amount of damage Thais is taking, and there's no board to respond to. That's the worst case scenario because you can't answer a you can't answer a board already. Exactly. Right, but you can't answer weapons unless Wait. you start freezing face every turn. Wasn't somebody running double heal bot last last night or something? Yes, yeah, somebody was. Uh, I don't Strange. know what. I think that was Thais with the was double heal bot. I think so. I if it was, My that's pretty good in this matchup. Yeah, I'm not even sure Tice is running Pyroblast. Maybe that's the cut. This is a. Uh, I, I would say Tice is really ahead right now. I mean, maybe it was Firebat running the double heal bot. You make me second guess myself. Because I've seen so much Freeze Mage in ATLC and it's been exactly. really great because I'm happy to see more Freeze Mage and less uh, Tempo Mage. I find Freeze Mage to be one of the most interesting decks to pilot. Uh, I should stop saying pilot, I should say play instead. You know, it's just kind of an unnecessary synonym. But I'm happy to see more, uh, more Freeze Mage played, I guess. It's probably my favorite deck. That's competitive, of course. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like playing solitary. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's the thing. Like you're, you're playing against yourself and how well you're able to plan your turns. Um, yeah, yeah. And I guess sometimes protecting. you're playing against your secrets because they just don't want to come out on time and then you're scrambling to get them out. So, so Doomsayer here. Looks like he just wants board. Is he dead? No. Is he dead? <laughs> I don't think well, he I mean, get... uh, Oh, wait. Rockbiter, maybe? How much is that? Yeah, Rockbiter weapon would be, like, lethal, I think. That would be, like, <laughs> way, way over lethal. I think you need to just expend a Lava Burst now in case you draw into more burn. But you might want to be saving it for, like, post Alexstrasza or um, something like that. And this Doomhammer is putting in a lot of work. You start being a bit worried so, at this point, don't you? So goofy, yeah. And you need to draw him to heal, or you need to draw him to Alex. I mean, Alex is kind of healed, but Alex to be aggressive. Yeah, I mean, you've got Frostbolt Ice Lance. I mean, worst case scenario, Thais can use those as... Oh uh, my goodness. He well, that's going to pop the first block. At one. Sure. You can pop the block at one, right? Because you yeah. Rock Biter in, you Lava Burst, and then you Crackle. Yeah, wow. that's, uh, that's popping it. And good luck, Thice. You're gonna have to start <laughs> freezing face or hope nothing gets top deck ever again. 
Well, if he is the one running double heal bot, the odds of him drawing into a heal bot or uh, a barrier or even a, I guess barrier wouldn't save him. Second ice block spell. even. Oh, yeah, second ice block are pretty high. Except he can't play Alex Alexstrasza this turn, so it's actually really, really good for uh, Buskaka. Yep, and you have one charge left on your Doomhammer to guarantee a kill if nothing gets picked up by Thais. But he can and Based he on can the luck, it. it's possible. It's it's more Thais, or Oskaka has to uh, top deck something. Oh my oh. goodness, and there's the heal bot. Alright, Thais is, uh, you can see him sigh here, a breath of relief, or rather fill up his cheeks with air in relief. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that was, but it was uh, definitely relief, I could see. I guess you have to no. draw here, because you don't have enough... You could freeze face for the next like four turns, or like not four <laughs> turns, but you know, for two turns and then maybe yeah. draw into another freeze. So, like three turns to prevent. Um, well, four turns prevent, sounds about like, right now. Yeah, exactly. With that, uh, the ice lens. You might be scared of dying. I guess. Yeah, it looks like he is. So, he's just going to freeze face for the next like three turns. It buys. It, I mean, honestly, it buys him so much time. Unless Oscar really picks up an earth shock here to kill, to deny the draw. Um, and even that's really weak, because what if he's already holding Alex Straza? Uh, there's a lot of things that could go wrong from Muskaka's perspective, so you don't really want to commit either way. And the fact that you're relying on weapons to get the lethal and your top deck spells, um, you're afraid that Thais just picks up some of his late game to, to stay alive and then... You're hoping for like, what, a mana tide here? Taunt yeah, you? probably. I'd assume mana tide. Uh, it was picked up yesterday, I think, by Muskaka. That was definitely a good... Uh, a yes. good totem to find. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Toskar Totemic, by the way? Uh, I haven't played it enough to really develop anything too uh, solid right. on it. But I th think it's good. It seems like, on average, you get a pretty good totem. And, I mean, if you're hero-powering most of the time anyways, a shaman, why not just like have a card that combines it? So I don't mind it. Obviously it's bad when you're behind on board, but you just have to curve your deck a little lower. I Flame Strike. Looks like he's going to draw here. I might draw first. I don't know, because well, he might free space, right? Yeah, again, yeah. the same situation he was in earlier, but I would consider a Frost Nova to ping my Acolyte and then a freeze space, because the draw from the Acolyte is probably good enough. If he's running double heal bot, yeah. Uh, but you're pushing a lot of damage by Flame Strike, or not a lot, but you're pushing a decent amount. You're oh, you're right. You're right. Yeah, because your your units actually get a good face. So he is setting up for lethal, kind of. Not this turn, but the turn after. Huh. In a few turns, yeah. The yeah. Inovish Rollin is going to be like you almost don't want to play it because the Acolyte gets to draw off of it. If it comes down to the fact that Oskaka has to defend against minions from Thais, that's going to be pretty amusing. Turn of the tables. Hmm. Yeah, I actually really like the hold from the Anoyotron last turn from Oskaka. Um, because it doesn't get flame strikes. The guy didn't get a free draw. Now I think he's going to be more inclined to play it, just because there's already a 1-1 one -one on the board, and this will protect his 3-4. Uh, his so... I should see a Frost over here. Oh, there, and he is running second heal, heal but... All right. There we go. No, Thais, no, he doesn't. Uh, yeah. That's a safe. Exactly. He doesn't have to uh, free space every turn now, which is really nice. Uh, but he can freeze the board here. So, like, heal bot, trade in, Frost Nova, ping the 1 1. So, I have to ask, like, I haven't seen the second Ice Barrier, right? He's only played one. Has he cut one for another heal bot? I'd be very surprised. That's true. Because um, that's the kind of one, like, it's a modification you could make. I mean, in one way, it makes your mad scientists uh, more consistent in getting eyes block in a weird way. I'm not sure. Yeah, it makes your mad scientists a little worse. Overall, but again, yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm not sure. He might be running both. But then again, that might not be enough card draw to sustain. So Look at this face. damage, man. The heal bots are a lot of bursts. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous to say so. It's like six <laughs> damage out of your heal bots. He's winning because of those things. Little mechs just adding up. Heal bot, more like kill bot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
So he has a lava burst to stay alive, right? Uh, six on board. Six plus twelve is a number. But that's dead. would you do it though? No, because you don't win if you lava burst one of those, regardless. So yeah. you just assume he doesn't have the double fireball. And that is going to be it. Dice is going to be able to seal the game, and that's going to give Nihilim a lead. 4-1 to one over Force and Boys. Uh, Oskaka, if he plays again, could be benched and force force into play. Dang. Not exactly something you want to you be forced into. Well, oh, at, that point, at that point, it doesn't really matter because they have to be all decks with uh, every other deck, so of matchups course, yeah. wouldn't matter. Uh, but it would be a little embarrassing, maybe. Like the triple bench. <laughs> the you triple bench, bench. Skalka and then you bench forcing at the end just to rub it in. We'll have to <laughs> see if, uh, if they're able to do it. I mean, Thais and RDU are lacking one deck each to win with for the check mark. Uh, Skalka's got his Shaman deck to play, and Forsen has, uh, you know, his Zoom. Warlock and uh, Freeze Mage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's right. What do you cue into this if you nihil him? Um, I would probably just go with the Shaman. Okay. And and then just give Druid like so many opportunities. You actually you might be expecting Forsen to play a Freeze Mage. This this one because you know they'll be like oh like maybe they'll play Shaman so you know we'll mind game them into uh, playing the uh, the Mage uh, yeah because yeah, they don't want to get benched uh, so exactly. you, you have to play into uh, so you play Druid then right? I mean, yeah, because you be might you might expect a Freeze Mage. Because, you know, the, the obvious thing is to play the Shaman. So it just, it goes down to the little mind game thing. It's, uh, I don't it's know. It's a I'd coin flip just, almost yeah. at this point. Like, you're almost just coin flipping, sending whichever comes out. Uh, because it's all about, like, the value of benching Oskaka is so small either way at this point. Because um, if you bench Oskaka with, say, like, let's assume you go Shaman. Uh, or Druid, and you end up winning against Oskaka, then you still have to face off against Freeze Mage uh, or Zoo with your Shaman if you're RDU. So, I mean, I don't even know how you're supposed to win against a Zoo player as Mech Shaman unless you have a sicker star than they do, and good luck with that, right? So, it's it's a coin flip at this rate. I mean, Mech Shaman can beat Freeze Mage as well, so it's not like an yep. auto loss. You Maybe you're not comfortable with Mech Shaman against Zoo, though. Yeah, Maybe that's the big that's drawback, the is as soon as one of the players from uh, uh, Force and Boys ends up getting a win, then they unbend Shockey, which opens up you know a huge array of possibilities for you know deck choice. So Thais versus Forsen will have the Druid and Warlock matchup, one that is oh consistently goodness. considered awful for the Druid, but, but when you have a hand like this... You just keep that hand, I think. Yeah, uh, you don't move anything out of this. <laughs> That's it. That there's nothing to throw away. Exactly. RNG I mean, just shined on you. Don't don't insult it by moving anything. Oh, that's another improvement. So do you innervate the shade here just to get uh, yeah. like get it growing as soon as possible and then curve into into a growth? Yeah, because your your next turn is set anyways, and you might as well just get the shade out to deal with early threats. So to start growing, something like that. Yeah, I would Thais say just plays so much Druid that I'd be surprised if he didn't do it. It seems to me like uh, a near guaranteed play. I guess the only argument is maybe next turn I'll want to Wild Growth, Innervate Wrath, but you can always Wrath and delay the Wild Growth by one turn exactly. if everything comes to to that. It's just and Forsen is mad at the rope. <laughs> oh, his face when Thais took his time. All right, play the juggles. Put this apple on your head. So, do you delay? I, I mean, if I top deck a keeper, I'm playing wild growth. If I don't, I might consider rathing here. Oh, Just play that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never mind. Put a body on the board, maybe ramp if he doesn't want to trade. If he doesn't trade, then that's his loss. Then, yeah, you're gonna exactly. Then you get head. a wild growth and you get a wrath, and there's no like real answer to it. I would say. Uh, what could be played in uh, Forzen's deck that would deal with this? I mean, there is not even a combination of. Like, there's no Dark Bomb, you know that for a fact, having seen his entire deck list. Uh, there's no, like, crazy direct damage. No amount of juggles will do this. Unless he goes, like, Double Wisp into Double One Drop, but that's not happening either. Double Wisp <laughs> into Double One Drop. Oh, oh man, the Double Wisp, Double Target Dummy Opener. 
So Thais doesn't play this fire end. Alright, so See, he wants that's... to guarantee to keep the body. That's what I was talking about. People value wild growth more than aspire end most of the time. And next turn, he's setting up for next turn as well, because this turn he can end up going Wrath into Aspire. Maybe Living Roots is better. Than Wrath, probably, but, yeah. If you're looking to deal damage, but the 1-1s one are so useful against a zoo player sometimes. You might consider them. Well, you're not you're not doing it for the 1-1s, one you're doing it for the 2 damage yeah, on the The 2 jungler. damage, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you might want the cycle on the Wrath, but you also might want the tempo from the one mana thing. It's It just depends, because at this point you're kind of out of steam already, and if you draw another Innervate or something, you're just, you're done. Can't come back because you don't have any damage. So it looks like he's going to opt to play the Living Roots, that way he has the option to cycle. That's the big drawback of a ramp, like of any deck that runs ramp for Druid, which is basically all of them, because once you've used up, if you get a really good ramp hand, if your follow-ups are terrible, like if you get just spells that do nothing, um, you're gonna do nothing with that hand. Oh, P. Wow, Forson's gonna use P.O. to guarantee a kill on the Aspirant because he doesn't want to see a 6 drop. Um, that hand's actually not terrible. You have double Void Caller into, like, Doomguard, so it's really hard for the Druid to deal with. Uh, it just depends what... Nice wow. Into, and that's, yeah, that's... <laughs> that, that's pretty that's good. Pretty I'd good. say yeah. that's just about good. You saw one P.O. So, for the Warlock to kill this, he's going to have to push a lot of abuses onto the board. Uh, and it's not looking super likely, all things considered. Get a big bear and push face. Forsen's in a really tricky spot here. He has to just develop the board and fall behind on tempo, giving his opponent the time to be proactive about removal. Tice just isn't going to trade into that. There's no way. Oh, oh my man. goodness, Thais is getting the draws. Shredder, hero power of the 1-1 and then go face more. Yeah, another 10. Like Unless you want to recycle this and find a swipe. Yeah. Maybe find a you don't, swipe. You don't need a swipe. Well, for later you do. Yeah. But you, just, you don't want to pop the Void Caller whenever you're ahead on board. It just seems... No, seems hell no. Yeah. Give him a Malganus, lose the game. And this is a story <laughs> of how Druid just loses. All right, so Thais, uh, I don't know if he was considering making a trade here with the 1-1, one -one, but the only thing that punishes this is like a defend of Argus, buffing two minions. So I think one of the best ways for Forsen to come back is if that Doom Guard comes out and allows him to kill the Shredder, but unfortunately for him, it's going to be the Void Caller again. No, nothing sure. comes out. Is it, uh... Oh, no, it's always the Void Caller. Believe me. It's always it, the Void it, it, it's, never, it's never what Forsen wants. So is he just dead? I think he's dead. Yeah, that's it. That's a uh, good game. That was, uh... That was quick. Yeah, that was Drew doing Drew things. And it was the Void Caller. See, I told you. It's always a Void Caller. Oh, going up 5-1. This is, like, just to get into the finals. Loser of this is eliminated, so... Alright, so one thing to note here. Even if RDU had a 20% win rate against everything else <laughs> from Forsen Boys, he is likely to move on uh, and seal the entire series for his team. And again, this would be a huge win for Nihilum, which have been on the worst roller coaster ride that the entire league has seen so far, going from probably an almost secured, guaranteed spot in the top two, which was then stolen away from them when they lost with only three wins instead of four, and then they went down the rankings to Oblivion, and they're climbing back uh, one win at a time, so if they win this match, they're going to move on to the live finale, and that's going to be for them uh, kind of uh, an awesome, I guess, uh, f finals, to the, the streak to get yeah. to the that whole spot. Sure. Getting there is like what everyone wants, obviously. Yeah. Get a chance to compete for 250000 or your share of 250000 Jeez. It's going to be still rough for one of the teams making it up there since you've got like a 25... It's almost like a 25% chance to not get anything and then you go home with like a pair of kitchen knives. Uh, <laughs> there's like absolutely nothing... There's not even a consolation prize, I think. I mean, I Brian Kibble and Value Town is getting something at the very least, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. He's already gotten... Yeah, he's gotten something. Yeah, I think uh, for, for him to be contested here, Shockey would have to get the life finale. But the Master of Duels is already sealed, right? Yeah, the like Master the of Duels. The score can't possibly... Because mm -hmm. it's gotcha. from Phase 1, not from Phase 2. So, RDU is going to have to find a one with a Shaman. Uh, tiebreaker doesn't matter at all. So, I don't right. think it matters what you send in at this point. You might want to do it for morale or something. Maybe send in uh, your best matchup, which is Mage. 
I think it's it, mage. Maybe maybe Warlock is better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I was gonna say I think Zoo is slightly better uh, for the most part, just because the if you deny the Shaman the board, then you can possibly just snowball out of it, because the Shaman has no Whiplash mechanic. There's no Lightning Storm in his deck, right? Like there's like one percent of the Shaman decks that, that run that. It's kind of non-existent. Oh, man. Poor already use Ghostu Gamer. When you go last, you just get the worst matchups, and your Ghostu Gamer is just tanks. Because you're right, fair, actually. Ghost of Gamers doesn't account for that uh, that awful yeah. position in a team league where you're just forced to play your <laughs> the last match. So RDU like, picks up a pretty awful starting hand. Uh, the Anoichi one's cute, but the rest is irrelevant. Mm. Yeah, I think you need something more aggressive for RDU. You just mulligan everything. You need uh, Whirling Supplematics, Mechwarpers, Cogmasters, things that do stuff early. I expect Forsen to keep maybe the Doomsayer and probably the Frostbolt. And... Doomsayer is a pretty good keep, I think. Uh, if only because it's going to be able to, like You can drop it on a very early board. And if the Shaman doesn't have Earthshock or like a huge amount of investment on Burst to kill it, then very often you're just going to go away with the board and it's never going to come back. Oh, RDU picks up a nice <laughs> curve here. That is insane. That is a Wait, really good. Sorry. Wasn't the other Mech Shaman playing that? Wasn't Oskaka playing that? Everybody's playing Tusker Totemic. Oh, man. Mech, Even Shaman. In Mech Shaman? That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it's better in Mech Shaman than any other Shaman because it's the only consistent Shaman on the metagame. <laughs> it's Flame Tongue also. That's it's unusual. It's the only consistent one. All right, so we'll see if the Doomsayer comes down here. I don't think so, because you can just get a free kill with a ping, but... Tuskar Totemic giving you a good totem, like a mana tide. Now that would make some people salty. Hey, RDU oh, keeps please. getting the good cards. <laughs> <laughs> What's... I didn't know Mech Shaman was a minion base deck. That's so... That's so true. I don't know. I guess you have to play them. Like, what do you hope for? Totem, totem Golem, maybe? I'll take it. I mean, Manatide totem or golem. Totem Golem, like, pick one or the other. You got, like, a 25% chance to get a sick Easy outcome. Totem golem. Flame Even Tongue's also flame pretty tongue, sweet. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, uh, that's a whiff. It's a bit of a whiff. I mean, it right. might come in handy at some point. Well, you the thing the is, you're running, you're running Flame Tongue, so eventually it's going to get value regardless just by it being there, which is good. Uh, and it makes sense to run Flame Tongue on this deck just because you're running uh, Totemics. Yeah, Totemics actually maybe incentivize uh, mech shamans to run flame tongues because it was useless since the deck was mostly about oh my goodness, double flame tongue. Did you just go for it. Oh, you're playing one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It was good. And what does Forsen do? I mean, he's two turns away from Blizzard here. He's you, gonna have to well, you can just Frost Nova, and the next turn you can Frost Nova Doomsayer. Uh, or if you're not threatened and you feel like you can just take another eight, you can just play the barrier. Yeah. Corson's got way too many answers to this. Oh, like man. there's he's, yeah. He's got this. This is you know, Frost Nova, Frost Nova Doomsayer, into Blizzard into Flame Strike. There's just no way that RD is gonna push damage through board. He needs a weapon or something. I actually like him not committing anything here. Yeah, he knows better. Like unless um, so unless he really wants to like, go all in knowing that yeah. if it doesn't work out. I mean it's such a bad matchup in the first place. Maybe going all in is the only way um, because you're so unlikely to get the lethal if you don't. Maybe he'll top deck like Urshock into Lothan. <laughs> I don't know. The end is coming! Yeah. He can clear this if he draws a Doomhammer or an Urshock or Hex. And. Yeah, how do you probably <laughs> know this is not looking too good? And that must feel really good for Forsten. Looking at all those minions disappear into nowhere. Well, rest in peace. Forsen's got double secret set up, another 8 health, and uh, lethal prevention, plus his Archmage and the Alex draws. I think he can just sit back and relax while RDU tries to scramble back in the game. Well, he can he can commit to board really hard here. Well, you can just play everything, right? Yeah. So. Shredder could give you something sick. Well, Zappomatic's not out of... Uh, of course, he's just in such a good position because he, he actually had stuff to do that turn after he cleared. Because after the Doomsayer, you usually want to like make sure you develop a, a minion or you at least do something. And he was able to uh, get both secrets up, which is crazy. Yeah, there was no threat at all. Like sometimes when you get that board clear and you're at very low health, 
it's a problem because you're trying to scramble for cards when you need to just get card draw and you don't have anything yet. But he already had his options uh, in hand. So RDU's best hope is probably a doom uh, a doom hammer into another rock biter top deck, <laughs> and then hoping that he can push for a huge amount of burst that a mage can't prevent. But I wouldn't bet on it. Blizzard Doomsayer and Sea Ralph seems pretty strong. So you, I, I would have liked Blood Mage, just for the. Oh really? Oh, just to clear. Uh, I I like uh, Doomsayer a little bit okay. more just because uh, you're guaranteed a board clear unless he wants to commit seven damage to that, and then you get an Alex on board, and then you can't. Yeah, I, gu I guess he can't even play minions after that point Sorry. either. So, well. RDU probably knows that the end is... Oh, well, hello. That would have been good, yeah. That would have been good a little earlier. I'm not sure if there's much harder you can do right now. It just ooh, is he, he's even running Fell Reaver. Well, his that's that's weird. I mean, I haven't seen this in a while. Yeah, his version seems like decent against Freeze Mage. Also, it just uh, didn't draw Loth up at the right time. Forcing didn't even draw that amazingly. Honestly, he just had the Frost Novus. All he right, is well, Forcing Boys is going to be able to get uh, five to two. Uh, it's a slow climb back. Possibly, but we'll see. I mean, they've got the edge in that they can actually uh, isolate the Shaman now if they want to get all the wins. But as you said, since everything has to go through the Shaman, might as well throw the worst matchups and hope it sticks. Yeah, and uh, Chalky's tiebreaker doesn't matter. As well. I mean, he can right. throw in... Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is really that favorite against Mech Shaman, though. You might want to just go for the, uh, the Zoo. And then Hunter should even be fine against it, I think. So those are two good matchups already. And then you have yeah, to go I, for a mirror. Think, uh, I think Zoo's fine, right? Because it is known as one of the better board control decks, and Shaman can't fight with it, so... Yeah, I mean, ultimately, Force and Boy is just going to have to win every single thing against, uh, against the Shaman. I'm curious, I don't know, it'd feel bad for RDU if he lost all of the matchups. I think his and... Ghost of Gamers would never recover either. <laughs> like, not only would he never recover from it, but his rank might also well, how, tank. How bad would that feel to, like, deny your team a chance to win 200, or not, yeah, 250,000 total prize pool, but... Um, so to close, win too, right? Like, exactly. and it, this is, again, if he loses everything, this will literally be the roller coaster. I mean, there's nothing worse than this. They are so close to getting through. Even with all bad matchups, the odds are in RDU's favor that he wins at least one game by snowballing out of control. You know, Mech Shaman is good at this, right? They're, they will steal mm -hmm. games from anything at some point, uh, given enough rolls on the starting hands. So, it's just... Uh, just a matter of seeing whether or not this can win. Shalky's going to go for his aggro pally against the Shaman. I like that. There's no board clear on RDU's side, so not necessarily a bad matchup. Oh, my Andrew God. Rider. Wow. That's a That's... really good starting hand also from RDU. Yeah, RDU's got the coin, too, which gives Whoa. him... Whoa! Shalky's hand is really good. Both players' hands are amazing. I think the Anoyotron might be what breaks the the deal. Oh man, this is such a painful start. So you have to sacrifice a Clockwork Gnome, basically. You can just play Cogmaster here. And then go Anoyotron, Coin Clockwork? Mm hmm. Uh, I don't that think you need to coin so anything awful. out right now. So you want to coin the Shredder on turn, uh, turn 3? Well, yeah. Yeah, that's probably correct. I don't think you get anything from just coining out the Clockwork Gnome right now, though. If you play Cog, you you could have coined an Oyotron, I guess. That's not terrible. And the next turn, just play Cog Master into uh, Clockwork Town. That's so cool. That looks like what he's going to do. Alright, so he's going to try to deny the uh, Argent Squire. It's a really good deny. 
Sharky with a pretty good top deck. To deny the deny. I think you just play Mirror down the line. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the, the double divine shield versus a single divine shield. We all know who wins that. Uh, <laughs> and you top deck uh, Blood Knight. Easy game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, RDU. I don't know about that attack. Wow. Oh no, no, that that's fine because he's, he has muster for next turn. I'm sorry, that was that was good. Um, no, the attack's fine from uh, yeah, yeah. Shaki's side because he can just use the weapon next turn to to finish it off. That that draw is really good though. Dang. Turning up the heat. Shaki is not going to be happy to see this, but then again, uh, the the Mech Warper is going to take either two damage or one of the Clockwork Gnomes dies. I expect the Clockwork Gnome to die, but if the Mech Warper doesn't die, which is unlikely to, uh, then the Pilot of Shredder will come down next turn, and that's that's going that's going to be a bit tough. It's a good thing that he's got the Iron Beak already. Yeah, the Owl help, and how oh, he chose to attack into that. All right, that's interesting. So we'll see whether or not that pays off. Uh, the spare parts can't really be played if you develop the shredder, so they're not going to have an immediate impact. Do you just push face and let the paladin make the trades, or are you so afraid of consecration that you can't do that? I don't think you can play around consecration at this point. You can trade one clockwork gnome and then go face with the rest. Yeah, I think the debate is whether or not you attack with the last clockwork. But since he's got three one ones, you kind of have to. I like it because it uh, protects your shredder a little bit more. Uh, Rusty Horn is pretty sweet as well. That's going to give you. Whoa. Oh, that's going to hurt a little bit down the line. Huh. Such an awkward turn for Shocky. You want to get rid of that shredder, but you really can't. Maybe you just kill the two one ones, and then and you then blessing sword. a king's. Yeah, blessing a king is one of your guys, and just push. I don't mind that at all. I think that's good. Next turn you can go Owl into Muster. Yeah, I think it's curving pretty nicely. If you like, if you play it for curve here from Shocky, uh, from Shocky's side, I think it's perhaps a bit better. But those spare parts could be really big deals. I mean, imagine an emergency coolant on that Blessing of King's Recruit. <laughs> that would give uh, RDU quite a bit of time, and that that Shredder is just going to stay up. Oh. Whoa! All right. I mean, he does have the edge over the long game, right? Yeah, he might be scared of uh, an air shock as well, something like that. I can see that. And like, those spare parts are actually gonna kind of hurt RDU just because of divine favor. Mhm. Mm you have to dump them as soon as you as you can, but yeah, dumping taunts doesn't seem very advantageous. <laughs> So does he rock bite himself and kill a 5-1 and push face with a 2-2? Two because -two? the 2-2 two -two represents 2 damage, but the rock biter represents potentially an extra 6 on a doom hammer. Not that you can really fight play for around board. it. I think you'll lose if you don't fight for board, so I like rock biter. What about kill the 1-1? One one? What about kill the 1-1 one one with the 2-2 two -two and uh, rusty Just horn your totem? That's not bad either. Um, because it tanks to 5 damage, like, forcefully, right? And then the muster kills a 2-2, I guess. The, um, the Lights Justice does. Ugh. This is not... This is not where RD wanted to be at this stage of the game. I Gotta make that trade. He's playing for value. And he's gonna taunt up the Cogmaster to make sure that uh, a trade occurs between the 5-1 and the 1-2. I mean, his board is gone. <laughs> Yeah, goodbye, board. You will be missed. Well, Lothav's a bit tricky, but the abusive can deal with her pretty nicely. I did it with him, rather. I think just playing the owl right now, yeah. And then pushing the five, or even killing the totem is fine. And mustering. Some solid. And I like RDU that he's uh, dumping his hands because he's scared of. Divine Favor? Divine Favor, yeah, exactly. Oh Whoa, my god, that's a sick top deck for RDU. That's going to put, that's going to turn up the heat. Shocky is going to have to pick up an equality, and uh, otherwise he doesn't play Aldor. We pretty much know that for a fact. So is this you time race. to race? You're going to find three cards off Divine Favor, so again, not too bad either. Can you kill it? Wait, there's five on board. Six. You can, can kill you it, kill but you're going to have to face tank it. eight. Yeah. I wonder if that's... Oh, he can just play everything and then Divine Favor and see what yeah. he gets and base his attacks based on uh, what he draws. 
Reaver, and I would be. Uh, I I want to shut my eyes when I play Fell Reaver because looking <laughs> at those cars disappear just hurts me inside. Oh, Rogue Batter gone. Doomhammer is still in. Okay, so. you go face because you drew the Argus. I'm pretty sure. So you kill a spell damage, should not get blown out with like a double crackle turn, and then and you, you know, push for. for yeah, you know he runs flame tongue as well, so it's worth killing totems generally. Right now he's considering just making the three damage go into the um, the eight eight, just because you know the abuse gets value that way, or if he yeah. wants to go face with it. But that rusty horn is going to be pretty annoying. The thing is, like, you don't expect you to have any more cars after next turn if you are RDU, basically, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost uh Wait, how much damage is that? So he's on 13 health, oh, Lothar, Rusty, rusty Horn. Yeah. What are you, Rusty Horn? Rusty. You're Rusty Horn, you're Lothar, right? Probably, because that, that, uh, that, that Fell Reaver gives you lethal next turn if he doesn't mm -hmm. taunt up. Exactly. Doesn't give you well, yeah, In theory, it should, yeah. but Lothar is going to fall down, and that's going to stop it. That or, uh, that or an Argus. Yeah, you already know Shockey's running Argus, but can you play around it? I mean, there's no way. There's too many mids on the board. Like, nothing you do will really change that. He's going to end up taunting Blothub, I think. Oh, wow. He's going to push for it. Oh, man. What is he hoping Ar to draw into next turn? He can't lethal next turn if he tries to top deck something. Um, well, wait. Maybe if Blothub lives. The thing is, your minions have taunt by default, because they're going to kill your opponent. That's how you kind of look at it if you're RDU, right? Yeah. But you, can protect, this... your, uh, you can protect your Fel Reaver. Because he can't clear both, but maybe he opts to just clear the Fel Reaver. RDU okay, kills a minion with this. Alright. Let's see. That actually was pretty good, I think. So, just trade into Lothab. And well, you don't have to like you just push Argus. face and hero power defender. I like Argus into uh, dude, and then just smork him, maybe. Yeah, the, I mean it's really hard to imagine RDU coming back from a board state like this. I mean Earth Shock on the Shield Mini Bot is the best case scenario. Power Maze the other one down, and then you have Lethal. Actually, yeah. actually. I mean, how are you going to deal with the Shield of Mini Bot that's taunted? Yeah, it's you absolutely really, need really Earth Shock. Um, so this is it. This is the moment to see uh, if RDU can top deck the Earth Shock. Because if he does, he wins this. Unless Lothab is traded into by Shocky. But he has to face tank 5, which means he still wins. RDU with one top deck. And that is the Earth Shock. I don't think I've sure. seen any get missed. Yeah. Well, I, d I don't think he runs Earth Shock. Well, if he doesn't, then that's, that's GG. Oh, this is a safe play, right? Oh, no, it's not. Okay, going Alright, RDU with one top deck. If he runs Earthshock, there's a chance he doesn't. He looked very sad when he saw the fact that his opponent taunted up. No, I don't, think, is... I don't think you can fit the Earthshock in this deck. You're okay. you're running too much. Like, you're running double to, uh, Tuscar Totemic. You're running Fel Reavers. I just don't see how he would ever fit it in. So you're going to have to try, I mean, the, the Anoyotron is tanking a bit of damage. The question is whether or not you're going to be able to, uh... I think the game's over, right? Anoyotron, even with the, uh, Rusty Horn. Oh, with six. the Rusty Horn, you're right, actually. Oh, wow. Forgot about that Rusty Horn. Yeah, so he's got to go through a total of one Divine Shield, so that's like, let's say, one damage. Uh, an eight. So that's one damage plus eight to go directly. That sure. might be the card that does it. This might be the card that does it. Is it, though? Two, I think it's one off. A six, six there, that there. He's not. More, he's a lot. He's a lot off. I think. So, ping South Sea. One, he's two, run, three. He's gonna be two off. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's two yeah. off at the very best. Play Lothab and Hero Power, I guess. Well, th there's a chance that Ardu can do it because even if he picks up a Lava Burst and Lothab comes down, uh, he can still win this. RDU could take it. I haven't seen Lava Burst yet. Maybe he cut those. I didn't see them get milled. I saw the Crackles go, but... I think he runs one. Doomhammer's out. Lava There's Burst. Lava Burst. Oh my god. Oh, the double Lava Burst. He needs to play the other card. That way it's, he mills more cards. Uh, that's it. That is, that is it, I think. RDU has no more win conditions. Exactly. Maybe he wouldn't have been able to keep... Maybe there's, like, no way for him to keep a He has one a card deck. left. 
Okay, yeah, there was no way he was gonna end up with the deck, no matter what. He had to hope the last card was gonna be Lava Shock. What's left in his deck now? Another Rock Biter? I think I've seen that already. Ursha, oh, he's running Urshock. There you he go. He could have had it. <laughs> he could have won. He could have top decked into Lethal. He could have. It was possible. RDU is gonna go down again with a Shaman. Uh, Enforcement boys will be able to slowly creep back up to possibly equalize the series very soon. Again, they still have to win um, the entire thing, and RDU can probably maybe get a single win against uh, the rest of the field. Ah, oh, man, that that Shaman deck. I don't know. It's not bad. It's just. It's inconsistent, it's that's what Shaman does, right? If it's 50-50 against everything, there's a chance you're going to lose. <laughs> like, you don't have very favorable matchups, I feel like. Except for Druid, but they didn't bring Druid, did they? Huh. It was actually pretty interesting, because like with a 50% win rate against everything, before before you look at your five matches, you're like, okay, I surely I'm going to win one of those, right? <laughs> uh, but then as you go into either of them, uh, you just you feel like you're about to get crushed. Uh, make Shaman against Hunter. How bad or good is it? I get the feeling uh, Shaman has a pretty good chance. I think, I think Hunter it wins that matchup. Might have and I think edge. Zoo. I think Zoo wins the the matchup as well. I, I think, agree. I think the Shaman versus Shaman is gonna like. Obviously, it's not you know 100% win. It's just a little favored. You know, maybe 60%, maybe uh, 65 or something. But so the Shaman can obviously win those matchups. But you know, you might as well send in the good matchups first and then go for the 50-50. Uh, with the Mech Shaman versus Mech Shaman. I mean, a coin flip at worst against Askaka and bad matchups again. I think the the Hunter versus Shaman isn't that polarized, is it? Because like from what I, from my perspective, uh, if they both smork, which they often do, Shaman has spells that do more damage on average. That's true. Uh, but, like, if it comes down to that, but the thing is, their opponents have the inevitability, of course. I think so, it's more that uh, Hunter has... What does Hunter have? Hunter has... Uh, quick Shot, Kill Command. You no, know, they have two drops. They have uh, really important ones. They have Creepers, they have Jugglers, and they have Mad Scientists, which give them a ton of tempo. They also have uh, decent early game weapons that can deal with stuff. Like, imagine you drop a Mad Scientist and it trades with their Cogmaster, then you get a Freezing Trap, then suddenly you get Tempo on board. Can uh, they trade Beach, with Cogmaster, so. though? Because like, I think I think that's a mistake to trade as, as Mech Shaman against Hunter. That's true, um, but I mean, you could just run it in for yourself. Uh, you also run a lot more one-drops if you're playing aggro Hunter. I think it's a little favored for Hunter. I'm not saying it's like, you know, crazy favored, because obviously Shaman can get like a good curve and win. It looks like they're going to go for their uh, Shaman versus Shaman matchup. All right, if they feel that's the worst matchup, then they're just queuing in uh, what they think could lose more often than not. Or maybe they're just asking people to vote uh, or to just raise their hand. If you're willing to go up against RDU, just raise your hand. They, they send someone. Let's go up volunteers. Um, and as a coin flip matchup, it can go either way. Both players are very proficient and they run a pretty similar list where RDU, however, has the Fell Reaver or Oskaka doesn't. All right, RDU with a decent curve, but the Anoyotron's oh. there to contest, and the Zapomatic is on both sides. Start is not bad for RDU. The Cogmaster is really annoying. Whoever plays it first gets the edge, but the Anoyotron is also a, a good way to stop the Cogmaster from doing anything, really. RDU is trust. He, he realizes... Everything is hinging on me right now. <laughs> I, I am the team. I, I am the guy who can carry and lose this. Oh, Skaka with a double Zapomatic. Good thing Using there's a power maze for RDU. Good thing. Uh oh. All right. So. This is weird. This is a really weird situation for Oskaka because if you want to protect the Zapomatics, you're feeding him an Oyotrons. Um, consistently, so you have to pray that he doesn't have a Zapomatic to get, you know, double hits or power mace on the following turn to start removing your stuff. So I think RDU still has an edge here. Yeah, I think the edge is actually yeah, uh, quite substantial, I, actually, yeah, like in this It's the weapon, and going first with the curve is good. Very, yeah. very good, because you're always a turn ahead, basically. And Using using the coin and aggro matchups and not gaining tempo because this was just basically the contest board. He got a little tempo, but not very much. It was like really really bad. He doesn't attack in. 
Yeah, he wants to keep it with the weapon. Now, Skaka might feel comfortable enough to drop his Zapomatic, but with the Power Mace coming up, that's going to be a slight mistake. This is actually not going to do anything. And in fact, it's going to leave RDU with two minions on the board. This line of play from RDU guaranteed that both his minions survived. Um, because if he attacked with a Cog Master, then attack with an Oyotron to the Cog Master and play another in Oyotron. In this case, Roskaka would have worked wonders uh, if he had removal for the Zapomatic. So I really sure. like RDU's line of play. Yeah, that was good. It kind of stinks, uh, the aggro versus aggro matchups, because you're kind of pigeonholed into playing these cards. You mean on tempo, no matter yeah. what happens? Well, like, an aggro versus aggro, you kind of just play a lowest curve card most of the time, but there are little things you can do, like like what Oskaka just did, right? He attacked into the Whirling's right. automatic with his thing. That gives you a little edge. Uh, there are little things you can do. But sometimes you get pigeonholed into playing bad cards or uh, suboptimally just because you drew poorly. Yeah, Oskaka's play here was top notch, right? Because he realizes yeah. if I play double Anoyotron, then I really can't um, kill this Appomatic. It, it, like if unless I attack it first. All right. So the question is, will RDU force his opponent to make the trade? Or will he make it himself? Like, is there a reason not to do that? I mean, the only way he wouldn't trade is a misplay or a storm uh, or something. Yeah. So. Earthshock, perhaps, would be an issue. Like, you lose a minion for free. But you already lose a minion for free either way. I like just trading. Like, there's no point in waiting. Yeah, you, you know he's going to make the trade. You're just opening yourself up for a potential bad outcome. All right, well, uh, RDU with the Power Maze dropping on the Shredder if he wants it next turn. Possibly he's going to be able to top deck another mech for the Mech Warper, depending on how things go. But it's looking like so far he's got the edge, but those Fire Guard Destroyers could come in and ruin his day. Yeah, you don't really want to be using the Lightning Bolt here just because you need to be curving into the Fire Guards. Right. But there lies the issue. If he has another mech next turn, he's just going to attack in, and then he has like a huge board, and... It's gonna feel bad, man. And this is actually the worst case scenario. RDU picks up a crackle, or I mean, this, these two crackles are amazing because the amount of damage they represent means you can actually go face without being worried of lacking burst. So RDU probably feels very good right now. Like this is this is a position where he's got to feel a bit more comfortable than he was at the beginning of the game. This could be it. I wonder how tense he is right now. I'd like to have uh, his heart rate. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you have to play fire card. I agree. Five attack, that's good enough. Um, you just smork it, right? Like I think smorking it. it's right. Yeah, you I just, think going face is fun. You have the edge. I mean, you've got nine damage on him right now. And look at the board. Because no player is playing Lightning Storm, like, Oskaka playing from behind means that he's going to spend his attacks on killing smaller minions or equal size minions. And meanwhile, RDU just keeps putting down threats. And that's the weakness of aggro. Like, this is kind of why the Mech Shaman Mirror is so volatile. Because when you look at, say, Mirror Match Hunter, the Unleash is a good whiplash mechanic. Right? Like, in many cases... Um, you can play Unleash to come back from a bad position, but from a Skalka's perspective, there's nothing to swing him back in the game. Yeah. That's a decent play from him, so you can just bolt to the 3-2 if he wants. Yeah, that's actually not too terrible. That's that's a good play. You're right. You mech Warper into uh, Whirling and then just bolt. Try to force your opponent to trade. You could even play the uh, Fire Guard Destroyer next turn. That's just... It's hard to come back from this position, for sure. Party is going to have to get some pretty bad draws. I mean, the thing is, if RDU, is trying to, if RDU decides to play defensively here, like, if he doesn't pick up a weapon, he might not feel confident enough to push. Like, if he picks up kind of an early game minion... Oh, never mind, that's good enough. That, I mean, that is more He's going to have enough. to kill the, uh, the Whirling's Appomatic. So do you crackle it? Yeah, and then just play those two and go face. Mm-hmm. Might even feel inclined to protect his uh, Anoyotron. 
Hey, you could kill that. Uh, is there's no drawback to killing the mech warper and denying your opponent? Because by playing uh, defensively, I guess here what he what he's doing is he's playing like zoo. And if you're if you're getting the zoo play over your mirror match shaman, then I think you're winning. So like no matter which line of play he takes here, I think he's gonna be in a pretty good spot. The only time where things like this backfire is when uh, like. Earth shocks fall down with a weapon. Yeah, exactly. That's this about it. Yeah, you can't really get punished for trading too. Well, you can, but in this case, I don't think he can get punished for trading too much. So I don't mind it. Just playing it safe. You even get value from the healing totem. All right, nothing here will go through this Anoyotron for a long time to come. Askaka's looking like he's even further on the back foot, and RDU must be looking at this like it's already a victory. Might try the Tuskar Totemic and hope for a, a dream. <laughs> a bug. <laughs> Just a Doomsayer a Totem. <laughs> uh, Blizzard, what is this? Doomsayer Totem. Oh, this is good. Imagine this, though. That'd be great. It's like the story of that guy who was playing a game uh, with a Shredder on the board. The min a cut purse out of Shredder and he got extra coins that won him the game like he didn't know what was happening he's like what is this card I don't even know what this is actually uh, happened to me the other day I got a cut purse off like uh, an effigy or something and I had a flame waker on board I attacked face and I dropped him with a flame waker and arcane missile and his bold board was cleared he was so mad poor guy cut purse is, cut purse is sick it's a sick snowball potential card I think uh, it needs a little bit of exploration so RDU keeps punching face, finds another layer of taunts, and he's looking at uh, Lethal in the next few turns, if not next yeah. turn. So... Unless there's a miracle Tuskar Totemic into Stoneclaw. <laughs> into double Stoneclaw here for us. Into double Stoneclaw. <laughs> into somehow dealing with the board. Paladin yeah. Shredder, and then you pop his Shredder. You Lava Burst Shredder, Doomsayer comes out. You top deck Doomhammer into Rockbiter. RDU gets nothing but garbage. It's not completely over. There is some RNG in the game that exists that could swing this back in Oskaka's favor, but it's not looking good. Picks up a Totem Golem. Alright, one of the nice better early. outcomes, <laughs> but it's a bit too late, it feels. Is that lethal on board? That's 6, 10, 11. Missing one. It's off, yeah, off by one. So any top deck does it. He's seen two Cogmasters, which are basically the only dead draws at this stage that do no damage. Um, maybe one. At the other Anoyotron also isn't lethal. Oh. Everything else kind of is. And RDU is happy. Oh man, he's so happy. He, he was gonna tension. win that anyways. I feel like I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that was the defining moment in the game. Yeah, he's just happy that the pressure <laughs> can be taken off of his shoulders. He's like, you know what? I'm done with this. Nihilum is moving on to the finals after the grueling series of matches they've had to play in the Archon Team League. So congratulations to them, Force and Boys. We will see you on the losing bench, I guess, alongside some of the other teams out there. So we're down to the top four at this stage. That was a really intense finish for Nihilum. Um, hopefully they'll do, uh, you know, for them, for their, for their sake, that they don't finish fourth place in the grand final. So based on this, we have Nihilum and Temple Storm moving on to the live finals. It's kind of interesting because Temple Storm beat Nihilum yesterday, uh, but Nihilum still makes it after going through so many matches. I think they are the team that has had to play alongside Force and Boys the most matches in the league. Uh, and Force and Boys and them uh, fought, like, you know, fought off at the very end there. Really intense. Wow, what a relief for them. Yeah, I actually expected Force and Boys to be one of the teams that make it, uh, just because they have individually pretty good players. Uh, Nihilum I expected to make it as well. I expected them to be top of the groups and get out. But, I mean, they made it through the uh, Phase 2, which is good. Yeah, it it's a, always it a, a little tricky, right? It, it, was yeah. a, it was a bumpy road. Like, getting to the finals for Nihilum was a bumpy road, but they finally got there. Um, so this is the one and only match we had to cast today. It was a great one. And that RDU relief, I guess, clapping of the hands at the end there, he's just... He seems so happy. It's kind of rare that you see him uh, being happy when he displays emotions on stream. So. <laughs> Usually it's all the salt, right, that pours out. All right. Well, uh, do you have any last words before we wrap this up, dog? Uh, no, I think I'm. I think I'm good. <laughs> All right. So before we go, guys, a quick shout out to the partners. We've got AlphaDraft.com. Obviously, you want to check them out. Esports Fantasy League, AlphaDraft.com. They can match up to two hundred fifty dollars of your deposit. Go ahead, dog. What? Oh no, no. I was trying to point at it. It just it's it's really hard. 
It's like over oh, there. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's kind of over there. Yeah, yeah that's right. Exactly. Um, so you can just check them out, get a share of the, the huge amount of money that they give out each week. And Amazon App Store also doing promotions, 50% discount on 40 card packs. Check them out on tmarcon.com slash Amazon or amazon.com slash Hearthstone. Also, huge thanks to Amaz for organizing the entire event. Um, this has been really, I mean, the, the production value of this is, to me, pretty stellar. The matches are on point. The players are sick. Uh, just organizing the whole thing has been uh, really amazing. So I'm pretty happy to be a part of this. We'll be back with the live finals, uh, which is going to happen a little later next month. It's going to be actually live from Texas. You're going to be there, dog, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So mm -hmm. we should see each other there as I'll be casting some of the Sweet. matches. So, yeah, we'll meet live. <laughs> what about that? Oh, man, so, guys, thanks dream. for watching today. Uh, we'll see you next month. Have a nice one.